decides to bring it out. And the ball is loose. Rams say they have the ball as Montgomery spits it up. And it's L.A. football. It looks like Ramik Wilson, a backup linebacker, delivered the big hit on Montgomery. Can you believe that? Just a decision alone by Montgomery, deep in his own end zone, knowing you're going to spend time off the clock to get you the two-minute warning, and you're nowhere close to the 25, and now give it away. Okay, obviously some uh, difficult decisions were made by the organization today. I think you know we have made Greg Williams the interim head coach and Freddie Kitchens, the offensive coordinator, and he'll obviously call the place. I think we did what we thought was best for the organization. I think that we put the organization in a better place today than it was yesterday moving forward and we're comfortable with the decision. I think the message today is we're not going to put up with internal discord, that we want people who are collaborative and work together. My name is Golden Tate. I'm extremely excited to be a Philadelphia Eagle. It's an extreme blessing and dream come true to be a part of such an amazing organization. I'm excited for at least these next eight games to show who I am as a person, as a player, I and mean, most importantly, just help this, this organization win. I, again, I can't even put into words how excited I am to be a part of such a strong, passionate fan base. And, and that's just talking about all the sports. I love the schedule that we have coming up. I think there's an incredible opportunity to do some, some special things. Thank you, and I hope you all accept me, and I can promise you this, that I will work hard, very, very hard, to, to help this organization win. All right, we are on. That was a loaded intro, so I will keep this short, but you are home now for the next two hours. We are going to go through the Eagles. We're going to talk about their season, the next eight games. We're going to break them down. We, of course, have midterm elections on Tuesday. Find your polling place.org. So we're going to do a little sort of elections polling here as well. I got a lot of questions here for Jeff, Mike, and Adrian. So we are going to have loads of fun. Of course, we'll have our, a couple of interviews. We've got Mark Jackson this hour. We have um, Shane McGowan next hour, our mental game coach. But um, yeah, Jay is not here. He's at the Pumpkin Chunkin' Jeff. So um, he's pretty excited about our Golden Tate the third, isn't he? Uh, I think we're going to hear about that in the second hour, but yes, uh, I think he's extremely excited uh, to have uh, Golden Tate in the fold, uh, to have a new weapon on offense. Hopefully that might take uh, some of the load off of the running game, maybe even uh, keep the Eagles defense off the field, and that might take some pressure off of the secondary that the Eagles have had so much trouble with. We saw what happened against Carolina. Uh, it, it, obviously, the secondary is, is, is a huge issue. Uh, so hopefully the cascade effect of having this guy in the offense uh, can obviously open up some avenues and some open up some holes uh, on open up some holes for Golden Tate to run through and uh, to uh, get to the end zone. So that that would be the key uh, for this uh, Eagles team uh, kind of going forward is to integrate him with the other receivers. Uh, obviously, for him to. Uh, during the bye week to watch some film, to learn the playbook, and uh, to get up to speed with the offense, and then to uh, get down to business and uh, get ready for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, that's really what it's uh, really all about at this point because the Eagles have a loaded schedule uh, going, coming up uh, in the second half. Of course, the Eagles are on bye week this week, so uh, they have an opportunity to just uh, take some time now and, uh, he, like I said, really uh, practice and integrate uh, this new toy that I've been calling them uh, on the Eagles offense. So uh, it, it should be fun. I'm, oh, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. He's I'm, the... looking, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm really looking, I'm looking forward to seeing this offense because the thing is, what we were saying is there, there are holes. I mean, the offensive line is, is still an issue. We know that the secondary is still an issue. But at least they kind of filled one of their holes, which was a wide receiver. So hopefully that can balance out this offense and uh, uh, give the quarterback uh, another weapon uh, to throw to down, down the field. He's the golden receiver Beaver. in the golden era of <laughs> Eagles football. <laughs> and Howie Roseman didn't break the golden, golden rule of training <laughs> like those stinky <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Oh, we love so a good pun. Golden Tate leads the NFL in yak right. since 2014, since 2016, whatever stat you want to use. So you're going to have that at your disposal. That's going to help out the offensive line. Offensive line is really struggling in pass protection. So you can throw a lot of these flip screens. And he's going to get the yak on it. 
you think about the fourth quarter. They're they're struggling closing games right now. They don't have a running back. You can do that with the flip screens. Six yards a pop, do that. So Golden Tate brings a lot of versatility to the Eagles offense. And I think that with with this head coach, you know he's going to have put in some plays to take advantage of his abilities. Yeah. Uh, and that's, he might, that's going to be he a fun might, part. He yes. might even line up in the backfield, Field. too. That's Yeah. He might play <laughs> running back. <laughs> I, a versatile player can't do better than that. We want to know what you think. Nine uh, six zero nine nine one nine ninety two hundred. We're of course on nine twenty a.m. The Jersey. You can hit the listen live button on sportsgilletradio dot com. Mike, what are you, are you as excited as these guys? <laughs> We're making puns over here. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I think it's a good requirement for the Eagles to have another receiver. Um, I was really shocked at this one because I saw the other trades that happened, and this one like kind of caught me off guard because I'm like, I don't I don't really understand why the Eagles need another receiver there. Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's doing fine. Uh, Aguilar's uh, not being publicly uh, demoted like he, he was going to be like two years ago. And um, I think they're, they're young, they have young receivers too. I think Mac Hollins, I don't know if he's still hurt, but um, yeah, I he's on the IR right now. He's on the IR right, on now. The IR right yeah, now. He's on the IR. But yeah. I mean, yeah, Golden Tate is a uh, is a good good acquirement. Uh, he wasn't really doing much this year on the Lions. Uh, he's I think he was being overshadowed a lot by Marvin Jones and um, Kenny Galladay coming into his sophomore season. And um, so I think he he's gonna make a difference for this Eagles team. No question. It, explosive, you know, and you know who, who's explosive and might be back. Well, I hope uh, Sproles. He could be back mm-hmm. beep, beep. next game. Beep, beep. Right. You know, that'd be interesting to see uh, Wayne Sproles because they've been saying for a while, oh, Sproles, you know, he'll be back in the near future, and they've kind of held him out. I think that it's been something where they wanted to get to the bye week and give him the bye week and then uh, sort of uh, bring, Foles ba- uh, bring Sproles back into the uh, fold. Yeah, maybe so, they're really trying to get him going for the going second half, second of, the half season. of the season. Right, yeah. give him that breather and uh, then bring it back. Because if you look at their, the uh, schedule for the Eagles, they've got a uh, very tough uh, yep. schedule coming up in the second half, mm-hmm. and we'll get into that as we go they through the show. They absolutely do. We'll get into a little bit. We'll take a break. We'll get into some more, and we'll do a little midterm elections as well. But, yeah, like, Jeff, what have we got next? We've got the Cowboys, right? We should win that, right? It should be. It's tough. It's a tough divisional game. I hope. Very, very um, tough divisional game. you got to win that game if you hope to win the We have to division. win that game. We have yes. to win that game because next is the Saints. And that's an L. And that's, that's an a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a lot. No All right. That's I'm an doing L. it. we got to win. Sorry. We got a loss. All right, what do we have after that? We got the Giants. That's an L. Come on, guys. That's Giants. That's a win. That's, that's a like win. that's like don't even yeah. show up. We don't, don't even need half the team. Yeah. They can be a, yeah. And after that, we're, um, December third in about a month, play the Redskins. Yeah, that, that that's that's a tough game. I, I've always said that the last game of the season against the Redskins is going to be for the division. Yeah, so I agree with that. Redskins are looking good. This year. Redskins are looking. Redskins looking are looking good. good. They're sneaky good. But uh, they've got to win, like I said, they've got to win those division games if mm-hmm. they're going to go into the playoffs because it looks like this division is only going to produce one playoff team. Yeah. They've got so. some road games coming up, though, so it's yeah. a difficult I mean, part of the schedule that, for the, the Redskins, fact those, too. The fact that those the, the two road games that they have uh, against New Orleans and then uh, go, going out to L.A. are just going to be brutal. Yeah, but here's what might happen with L.A. because it's week uh, 15, team. I believe. Yeah. They if, if they can win today, beat the Saints, and they can – get some breathing room for the number one seed, maybe the Rams don't have much to play for, Mm -hmm. and maybe you can steal that game in the Coliseum when the Eagles fans take over again. That would be interesting because you know what? If they do it again, hey, you know, just uh, just keep their quarterback from uh, sneaking into the end zone again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's, uh, (laughs) settle down there, Carson. (laughs) Carson, just settle down, you know, just throw the ball this this year, don't do anything. Of course, you got uh, Nick Foles backing him up, so. Yes, but, uh, you know, I wanted to just had a thought. Like, the last game, I fr- I'm already forgotten about London versus the Jaguars, but what what is our, what do you guys think? Are we going to have, why are you laughing over here? You're the- He's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> He's laughing. Oh, laughing at the Jaguars. He's laughing at the Jaguars. Well, the Ben Franklin bridge didn't fall down, so yeah. everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what, I, what, like, the goal there, I'm just trying to understand this. The goal there is to get an NFL franchise, correct? Mm-hmm. More huh. money. And, like, right now we have, what, four games over there. Our yep. goal is to have eight eight and when is this going to happen do we think and will will i get a cheap flight over there 
Well, yeah. you know, like, it's like creeping. The NFL is creeping. You know, there yeah. are more games. It seems like they're building a schedule uh, yeah. each year, and they're trying to creep. Uh, you know, add a game each year. Sort of eighty-five, like almost eighty-six thousand you know. fans at that game, Jeff. Hey, I'm sorry for those fans. I really they, am. They've gotten, yeah. they've gotten mean, more did, got TV more. exposure over yeah. there. But here's here's what the Europeans think of football. Well, they they think it's it's rugby for for wussies. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because they're you know it's soccer over there. Yeah. It's uh that's uh that's the audience that they have, and then they look at this and they look at this weird uh, thing where you know they're throwing this football around, and you know they don't. Mm-hmm really kind of get it. I mean, now, of course, you have the transplants that go over there, the American tra- transplants that are over there, so they have a lot of this, though they obviously understand it, but yeah. uh, the native, uh, you know, British fans, no. Yep, so, and before I was laughing, I was <laughs> laughing at the, care. No, at the Jags. I was laughing at the Jags because <laughs> it's amazing how quickly the AFC South flipped. Houston is on fire, and getting Demarius Thomas for the Broncos. Great acquirement for them. Hey. The Jaguars are in complete free fall right now. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, the they Texan, dealt with a lot of injuries, too. Texans were uh, my pick to go to the uh, Super Bowl. And Bortles so, is not... Go. Blake Bortles, I'm sorry, he is not what people said. He stinks. He stinks. stinks. There you go. He's mediocre he at best. He stinks. He can't throw a football. Yeah, oh. he, he's terrible. He can't. I'm sorry, but he can't. <laughs> Cody Kessler run the offense better versus Houston than he did. I mean, Colin Cody Ka- Kessler, Cody, uh, Colin oh. Kaepernick, anybody? I mean, he's just sitting out there, and you're, and the Jaguars are out there. There and were they, rumors of Tyrod Taylor you know, too. Tyrod, I mean, you know, there, there are quarterbacks there, and it's like, you know, they want to stick with Bortles. I mean, I just, I don't. You know, know. It's, all right, you know that kind of leads me into my polling question. You want to do a couple before a break? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. All right, okay. again, findmypollingplace.org. Time to vote, guys, on Tuesday. Read, read, read. Ignore the commercials and all the garbage. Do your research. All right, here's one of my questions here for our midterm polling. You talked about quarterbacks, Jeff. Which young quarterback would you want to lead your team for the next six years? By the way, that's the length of a senator. Um, which one would you want? Carson Wentz, Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold? Uh, I love Pat Mahomes. I yeah. love Mahomes right He's now. on my fantasy team, yes. which is number one, by the way. I know saying. you're number one. I know. Number you're leading the league. I understand. Nobody that. cares yes. about your fantasy team, See, Kelly. Like, Kelly. I, my plan today was to talk about no, it for two hours, sorry, and people you know are like, it's so boring. Play, you know? uh, she just has to brag about brag it. Brag about I, it, yes. I'll just slip it in whenever but possible. Mahomes is terrific. I, yeah. I've got to say Mahomes yeah. right. you know, yeah. I, I, Wentz is also very Wentz is also very good. I like Wentz. I think you know he's starting to find his groove again and get going. I'd probably take Wentz because so yeah. what's going to happen with Mahomes is you're going to have the entire offseason to study him, and he is a gunslinger. So yeah. so next season, when, when you start finding the weaknesses, that's when you kind of, you're going to see a little bit of regression, I think, from him. But with Wentz, I, I, I think he's he's going to be the guy next six years. All right, Mike. You want me to list them again? Um, Carson, Carson, Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, Sar- Sam Darnold. Um. Definitely not Darnold or Mayfield. Sorry. Um, I'm going to take Deshaun Watson. I think if he could get fully healthy and not, and have like a good offensive line, I would take him because that Thursday night game against uh, the Dolphins, oh boy, he, he showed us. He destroyed the Dolphins. He showed Dolphins. us what he yes. did. What he did during his rookie his rookie year. All right, let me get another one in here. Hugh Jackson was got fired this week. Who will be the next NFL coach fired? Marvin Lewis, John Gruden, Dick Cutter, Jason Garrett, Dan Quinn. I'm going with I'm going with the clapper. clapper. That's all you have? <laughs> I, I, I'm going. I, I'm going to go five, with. Nobody, I mean, you're missing one. I'm going with nobody. Go ahead, I'm, fill in the I'm blank. Going, I'm, I'm, doing, go. I'm doing an X factor here. I'm yeah. going to say go Vance it. Joseph of the yeah. Broncos. I'm going. I'm, with, I'm going with Har. I'm going with Harbaugh Ravens. Right. John Harbaugh. Wow. Right, this is all the. Fi- this That's is a, a fill in ballot. Yeah. This is a fill in ballot. <laughs> something I'm going to do on fill Tuesday in. because the people. Candidates. There's like Ryan. people I yes. don't like, and then the person I thought I liked, I found out that they're like some sort of child molester. I mean, like they're all child molesters this, this year. year. Have you noticed that in the commercials? Like my they all are. Yeah. They, like they're... honest to God, I, I I don't know how I just got there, but <laughs> it's did. true. They're all like all right. Um. All right, we, we are going to have Mark Jackson on soon, so let me sneak it in the NBA. All right, who is the best player in the NBA of the young season? Okay, young season. 
Hmm. Of the young season, okay. not a young player. Right. Lebron, uh, LeBron, Steph, Joel. Um, Giannis the, the Antetokounmpo. Greek, the Greek freak, yep. And Anthony, like and Anthony freak. Davis. Yeah, give, me, yeah, give me the Greek freak. Greek freak. Yes. Freak, yeah, I like Giannis. I'm kind Giannis. of with you right now. Um, but I'm going to go with Steph, of course, because I love Steph. Uh, She's going with Steph. She's going to do yeah. I, I mean, gotta, <laughs> but the Greek, he's, he's having a great Steph is like crazy. Steph is like. Steph. I mean, he just he carries that team. Right? He it, just it does. Is, they, you know, yeah. I think it. I, we're gonna talk to Mark Jackson about um, the Warriors and and you know the team might be dramatically different next year, Jeff. So like, I wonder if they know that. I wonder if they like have this feeling. This is the last time we're all gonna play together with this lineup, and let's just. Let's just gel even more than let's we ever have. Let's just set records in three yeah, points. Set records. They're setting records three points. All these, all these, they, and they've set every record. I mean, it's like this team has set every record going. So, uh, but we're gonna take a break. Okay. Uh, we're gonna come back and we're gonna have Mark Jackson. You're listening to the Sports Skillet Radio Show, cooking up all the hot takes. Jump in and join us at 609-919-9200. Download our app at sportsskilletradio.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube by searching for Sports Skillet. And remember to show us some love. Make sure you like, follow, and share. Remember the TV show Cheers, where everybody knows your name? Never been there. But every time I walk into Wildflowers Restaurant on Pennington Circle, I feel at home and that I belong. Friday night, I headed over to Wildflowers, and even though it was packed, I easily found a seat at the bar and got cozy with 17 TVs. Baseball, golf, entertainment TV, you name it, including all NFL games. The bartender Dave suggested I order the Buffalo Wing Sampler, and you could tell he was a fervid fan. But reviews on Wildflowers in Restaurant Facebook page demanded... I tried the garbage truck pizza, and Kelly had just arrived and promised to help me dig in. Then it came. Garbage truck pizza does not live up to its name because it smells amazing and it tastes even better. Freshly sliced peppers and pepperoni, garlic, mushrooms, mozzarella, and meatballs all baked on this incredibly crunchy and warm double crust to hold it all together perfectly. Heaven, especially with one of their 23 beers on tap. I'm a believer. Go to wildflowersinrestaurant.com for more info or just come in. They are conveniently located on the Pennington Circle, right near I-95. I promise you, they will welcome you warmly, feed you well, and perhaps soon, even know your name. You're listening to the Sports Skillet Radio Show, cooking up all the hot takes. Jump in and join us at 609-919-9200. Download our app at sportsskilletradio.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube by searching for Sports Skillet. And remember to show us some love, like, follow, and share. Welcome back. We always could spot a friend. And now we're switching gears. We are ready and live with former NBA player and pre and post game analyst on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Good morning, Mark Jackson. How are you today? I am outstanding. How are y'all today? <laughs> we're doing great. We're doing great. We got an extra hour of sleep. Uh, we got. We're gonna have a great show today. Eagles bye week. But um, you know, Mark, last last time I interviewed you, I just have to say I've never been so happy to be wrong. I 
I, I, Mark, I mean, except about Donald Trump being a fascist, but that's separate. That's a separate issue. I'm not going there. I promise Jeff no politics. But um, Markel, he's showing me so much fire. Um, these last couple games, I have had so much fun watching the Sixers. Man, you really see his athleticism, his length. My gosh, those arms. He's looking really, really good. I think he's been important to the team. You talking about Markel Fultz? I'm talking about Markel. Yes. yes. I know. Shocking, yes. Mar- right? Markel is really coming into his own. He's starting to – the hardest thing for young players to, to adjust to in the NBA is the speed. You know, if any of them are wearing a basketball uniform in the NBA, that means they have the skill to be there. It's just adjusting mentally to the speed of the game. And you can see him starting to adjust starting to slow the game down in his mind and letting the game come to him, which, in fact, makes you quicker, makes you more effective. So I'm real happy to see Martell doing that. Okay. You know, the other thing, too, I think Twitter was, was sort of going crazy. I mean, I think we, we sort of wanted less of him, but now I, I, people want more of him. But just the way he attacks the basket, he doesn't seem to, I hate to say, you know, that he had the fear and, and maybe a couple other people on his team might be a little afraid, but he doesn't seem to be to fear the contact. He's just, like, attacking it, and it's really, really exciting. Like, he just seems to, like, trust himself, and he seems to be having some fun out there. Do you think that's what's going on? Yes, well, you know, you know, like I just mentioned, it was the speed of the game, but also being confident in your skill. You know, I believe he, you know, you question yourself sometimes being a new environment, and he questions himself, like, should I be here? I'm on a level with these guys. And I think he's starting to see that he is. And with that being said, I think the 76 are happy to see that he knows he's where he's supposed to be, because this game. This game can eat you up and spit you out, you know. But I think Markel, with the way he's gifted with size, his long wingspan, which I believe is 7'2", um, and he just has the body, the athleticism, and he like he embraces contact. He's not the new the new era of player that just want to stand outside and jack up three pointers. He is really there to provide a spark to get his, which in, helps helps the team get their their wins. And I'm really happy to see that. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So we're not going to be looking to him to be this outside three-point shooter. We're not going to expect that from him. He's going to do no. other things in the game. All right. So, you oh, know, yeah. and he'll be strong. And All right. But all right, let, let's get to the negative here. Um, what's going on with my boy? <laughs> my boy, Super Dario. Um, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, he was busy all summer playing for the Croatian national team and, you know, and all that. And he's a little tired, a little sore. I, I don't know. Is he going to come around? What do you think? Now, that's something to keep a close eye on because Dario is fatigued. He is very, very fatigued Um, because when you play for your national team, it's just not, okay, get some shots up, go through, shoot around, and let's play some games. No, those are real old-fashioned boot camp China trainings where you're getting ran into the hole two and three days a week and you're practicing two to three hours each practice. You know, that's what they do to the national team, especially Croatia. The problem is, Transition to the NBA, Dario needs rest. But now that the season just started, I don't see him getting rest. I wouldn't be surprised if the Sixers start sitting him a few games to see if they get his legs back because he is tired. The speed of the game, it takes some time for your mind to adjust because it's a lot different basketball in Europe. You know, um, every team in Europe plays like the Golden State Warriors. You know, get the ball out of your hands, pick and roll, cut, look for the weak side. That's how uh, Croatia plays which is similar to Golden State. Sixers don't necessarily play that way because Ben Simmons, Mark Hill, they're pretty much dominant ball, ball handlers, distributors, dis, um, distributors. So Dario has to used to just standing around, finding his spots, not touching the ball for two or three plays at a time. So it's a mixture of both the speed and the way they play as well as him getting rest. And I don't see that happening. But like I said, I won't be surprised if he starts sitting every now and then just to see if he can get his legs going. You know, maybe that's okay, because Sham at Muscala, I like what I'm seeing out there. And if that's what he has to do, take a few games off, you know, maybe that's a good thing. Um, well, we got to talk about Joel. I mean, he's just killing it. Um, he's just um, he's just breaking records all the time and, and getting into bigger and bigger leads as far as how many points he's getting and, and being compared to great, great players. Um, just yesterday, 39 points, one assist, 17 rebounds. I mean, you know what I think? I think the ceiling is, is much 
much higher. I mean, he got 39 points yesterday, but why not get 50? What do you think? You know, I think for us, it's so important to understand, like, this is the first season, first summer in five or six years that this man has not had an injury. So it means he was able to train, to work out, to work on his game in the summer, not worrying about getting rest, coming with minutes restrictions. He had the complete summer to really get it going. So I really think he's coming in fresh, really showing what he can do overall. And I really think that's important to understand that, that he's only going up from here. So I think we can never, we don't want to get our hopes too high, but I think that's what we need to. All right, Mike, my last question before I give you over to Jeff. Um, what about Ben Simmons? Do, 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 you, do you want to see just a little bit more of that fire that I, I was talking about that Markel was, has been showing lately? No, I think Ben plays a, a numerous amount of, of, of fire. He does. He, his flame is always on. I think the, the book is out. Um, the playbook is out on Ben on how you defend him. So teams are guarding him like the Boston Celtics guarded him. So now, what with that being said, is teams are, are getting back in the paint, forming a wall, not letting them get a full head of steam, and forcing them to shoot over top of defenders instead of defenders push, um, trying to question his ball handling skills and coming out on them a little a little further out than they should. And with that being said, he's able to get around them a lot easier. You know, when you now teams are dropping all of in the paint and forcing him to shoot over top of them, and Ben is not the best with his touch around the basket unless he's dunking it. So he's struggling with that a little bit. So with that being said, he needs to learn to adjust, do other things to help his team, which also means helping himself. All right, let's go around the league and uh, talk about Tyson Chandler. Obviously, a uh, report is out that he could sign with the Lakers uh, after the Suns buyout. What do you think of his fit with the Lakers? I think it's great. because First of all, we, we underestimate the effect that Joel, uh, JaVale McGee has had for the Los Angeles Lakers protecting the room, finish around the paint. JaVale McGee has learned to be a professional since signing with Golden State and now with the Lakers, and he's really shown what he can do. He's a very important piece to the Lakers as they build to win a championship. But when you remove him off the floor, the Lakers was playing Kuzma at the back of five and having LeBron girl with fives, and that's not going to make it. Tyson Chandler, the former teammate, mines with the Hornets, and he's really did a good job. They really did a good job scouting and knowing that what he can bring to that team, he can bring defense. He's another present in the locker room, but he also can give some finishes around the paint on rebounding. So I think that's important that people to keep a close eye on what the Lakers continue to do with their roster. This is not the last thing they're going to do. They're going to do a bunch more for the season ends. And what do you think about uh, Rondo versus Lonzo Ball? What do you think about uh, the, the fact that I think Ball needs to play a lot more than uh, Rondo at this point? I'm with you. I'm with you 100% on that. Um, Rondo is a a floor general. He, he kind of imposes will. Um, he might even impose his will on some coaches. He's still effective at his age. But I think if Lonzo Ball is your future, if Lonzo Ball is your future, you got to have him on that court. you got to have him on that court and ready to contribute, not just for now, but for the next 10 years. You know, I, I think Rondo is going to give him some things but if they're not competing for a championship, which we, let's be honest, we all know they're not, Lonzo needs to be on the court. He can't be sitting a bitch. He can't be backing Rondo up. He needs to be on the court playing major minutes, 20, 30 minutes a game. And then, of course, there's the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I think Clay Thompson knocked down another three, Kelly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I, mean, I would think 14 of them. Uh, 14, to be 14 three, of them. 14 yeah. three pointers mm-hmm. to set the NBA record. Amazing. Uh, and they uh, walloped Chicago 149 to 124. Uh, is this just one of the great dynasties that we're seeing in our lifetime here? It is. It truly is. And when I watch the success that they have, it, it, I hate to say this, but it does nothing but put. It does not put more questions in my, my mind. So I'm not going to lie. I'm not with the one. Let's hate on them. Let's wish they don't win the championship. I really would like to see them have all the success now. Because you know why? This all season is going to be very interesting for the Golden State Warriors. they got to make some really important decisions with Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson all becoming free agents. And they cannot afford all three. And Draymond's been very bolsterous and vocal. I'm not taking the pay cut. You're going to pay me. And Clay Thompson saying, well, I'll think about taking one. 
But I think Clay Thompson, coming the son of a former number one pick, I really believe that Clay is kind of playing the get guy here. Oh yeah, I will take a pick. I'm saying what he needs to say. But when the off season comes, they got some decisions to make, and there's no way all three of those guys will be in that Golden State uniform next year. No way. And do you think, speaking of that, do you think Durant uh, could sign with the New York Knicks? I'm hearing this Knicks talk. I, I really am. I don't know where it's coming from unless the Knicks, unless the Knicks get another superstar. Um, I can see Kevin Durant maybe. Okay, if I can put myself in Kevin Durant's shoes as a former player. I don't want me two or three championships to go in state. Time for me to move on. Okay, why not? I'm going to move on. I'm going to go see if I can win one by myself. If not, at least I'm going to be in the town. We'll make twice as much money in endorsements also, which will be the New York area, metropolitan area. That could be the case, but they got to have somebody else. It can't be just Kevin Durant, Nitakina, and um, the big dude from Lithuania. It just can't be those three. Because you don't know how uh, Przingis is going to come back. He's going to come back healthy. That has a big question in hand. But you need one more superstar. I'm hearing the Kyrie talk about him staying, about him going. I, I don't know. I'm curious. I'm real curious. I can't see it. But as a former player, I wouldn't put it past him. And speaking of that one more superstar, do you think the Sixers need that one more superstar to get over the hump and beat the Celtics? If Mark, Okay, I hate to say if. But if Markel folks have never got injured, he was that missing piece that they needed. But with the shoulder injuries, the, the mental uh, injuries coming from after that, it's stunning him. But I really think Mar- Dario and Markel folks can add up to be that third superstar combined. But I, I, I don't know. If, if a superstar is out there to be had, I think the Sixers want to get them a free agent. I don't think 76 want to give up any of these pieces to acquire a Jimmy Butler. At the end of the all season, our first round picks they have their own and the Phoenix Suns. I think they'd be willing to get it up to get Jimmy Butler. But will Jimmy Butler be available when the summer comes? That's still a question in my mind. I don't think he will. I think Houston offers some four first round uh, draft picks, even though the draft, the draft picks only late in the first round, they still first round picks. So that's something to consider too. And circling back to the Sixers for a second, uh, do you think Joel Embiid is turning into one of the top five players in the league? Top five. Hey. Um, oof. Ugh, top five in the whole league? I don't know about top five in the league. I think, let's just talk about the East. You got Giannis, you got Kawhi Leonard. I think Joel is either, I think those three are 1A, 1B, 1C. Then you had Kevin Durant, you had LeBron, you had Kyrie Irving, you know, Steph Curry, James Harden. I think Joel is still on the outside looking in on the top five. See, because that's, that's an interesting thing because he is definitely, to me, starting to put uh, put everything together. Like you said earlier, he's uh, the, the fact that he had uh, that offseason has really, I think, made a huge difference in – what he's going to do early in this season to be able to not have those injuries to deal with. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a nice start for him. What do you think about the coach right now? Do you think he's uh, doing well at this point? I think Brett Brown is right. figuring it out. Um, yeah. Respectfully, we gotta keep, we got to keep in mind that this is the first time he's had this much accumulation of talent on one roster. I really believe that he has to get everyone healthy. I, I think that's very important to understand that not everyone's healthy. Wilson Schoen, but he wasn't right. He wasn't 100% because I know Wilson Chandler's games very well. He was not 100%. Um, a hamstring is something you're going to be ginger about for a good while until you play, practice hard. He only had one day of practice under his belt, which never does anybody good. But I think Wilson Chandler is very important. I think Landry Shamit, I've been telling you all preseason and now, Landry Shamit is going to be important to this team. I, I see a lot of people, I, I really envision some teams calling for TJ. And I really believe the Sixers might take a, uh, a jump and get rid of T- Trey TJ to get some assets for him. But I think Brett Brown, even though TJ's his guy, I think it's hard for, for Coach Brett Brown to really force the issue and put TJ out there. We got Landry Shamit, Markel folks playing good. Yeah, you have been such a Shamit fan since like for a while now that we've been yeah. talking to you. And when I watch them, I think of you every time. Um, I just want to ask one more follow up question uh, talk about the Warriors. All right, so I'm trying to picture the Warriors without Dre, Clay, or KD. And I, I, I picture me. 
gosh, I'd love to have Clay over here. But but maybe Draymond. Maybe Draymond. Can the Warriors survive without their bad boy Draymond Green? Great question. So they have the young kid. I believe this is second or third year from um, University of Oregon. Uh, oh, I forgot his name. Um, the power four from Oregon. They're, they're, I don't know if people see the writing on the wall, but they are truly trying to they're truly trying to clone him to a Draymond Green. So if Draymond walks, I don't think that the, I don't think Golden State's going to offer Draymond a max. He wants the max. He's saying he should get the max. I don't think they're going to offer it to him. Um, so they're really they're really cloning the young kid from Oregon to kind of become him if he leaves. Clay Thompson, Clay Thompson's not coming to the East Coast, ladies and gentlemen. He said he is not coming to the East Coast. He already won his championships. So now if he wants to relax. And just go have some fun and keep playing. It's not going to be in the cold weather. It's going to be in the Los Angeles Lakers uniform. It's not going to be in Philadelphia. Yeah, his family's over there. So are you talking about Jordan Bell? Jordan Bell. There it is. Yeah. Bay. Jordan Bell. They're cloning Jordan Bell to be the next Draymond. And I think Draymond kind of, see, he kind of sees that. He's a younger Draymond, more athletic version of Draymond, bigger than Draymond. Um, and believe it or not, I think he is a better shooter than Draymond. Um, so the only thing that he's lacking that Draymond Green has is the ability to run the offense with a top of the key, to the, which is the major part. The ability to ball handle, make dribble handoffs, hit backdoor cutters, to make those plays that Draymond Green is averaging six and a half assists a game because of that. That's something that he cannot do. But I wouldn't be surprised they hit Draymond, well, you need to take less, and Draymond get mad and pursue the, the, the open market, and he realized nobody else will give him a free uh, uh, max salary. And then try to come back, and it'd be a lot of decent course, this course in the in the locker room. I see that, but I don't. I think it's a it's a high possibility that the Golden State Warriors could end up using Clay and losing Draymond. Oh my gosh! All right, well they just they're gonna have a great season. I mean, they, all right, we got to run here, Mark. I just want to thank you. I know how busy you are. I'm looking at your website right now, Jacko Two Five LLC dot com. I know that you've got so much good stuff going on with your camps, and um, I just want to thank you so much uh, for being on and taking that time out this morning. And anything else you want to um, say before we let you go? Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm in the process now of adding an educational piece to Jackal 25 where we, we're not just mentoring kids through basketball and sports, but we also add an educational component to our program. So I got a lot of things in the works. Um, hopefully get that completed by uh, by next summer. And if that's the case, you know, it's just the sky's the limit because my whole goal is to give back to these young kids in, or from all different backgrounds, giving them something that – they maybe cannot get from other places, whereas getting a strong mentor that also can help them. If they want to get uh, get some information and get some guidance in a world of sports and a world of being a good young man, you know, they're the kind of kids we, we love to welcome into our program. So now with the educational piece, now I think we're going to run a whole complete uh, service to these kids where we can help them not just on the court and mentor them, but also educational because, as we know, no matter, you know, no matter what kind of education they get and wherever school they come from, they can always get more. So that's something real big on I'm trying to get going now. Thank I, you. I love that. The total the total person. I love that. All right, Mark. Yeah. See you soon. Take care. Yes. Great talking to you. Have a good one. And that was Mark Jackson. Love having him on. Um, yeah, Jordan Bell, the next Draymond, and then the Warriors will be okay. <laughs> they just keep growing players, Kelly. Just I mean, like you said, just like just growing trees. on trees. He's just a baby. Yes. He's just like a seedling right now. Seedling. And another, you know, by the end of the season. All right. We want to know what you think. 609-919-9200. Going to go back to my voting here. Uh, FindMyPollingPlace.org, everyone. Midterm elections are on Tuesday. So, of course, we're going to have a little, you know, our own midterm polls here on Sports Skillet. I've got another question for you guys. All right, here it is. Give it to us. Are you ready? All right. Okay. What number will be higher? Golden Tate's touchdowns as an eagle this year. Remember, there's eight games left in the playoffs. Golden Tate's touchdowns. Or Ben Simmons' three pointers for the year. Golden Tate Tate touchdowns. Touchdowns. Okay, what if I change it to the majority? You're going to go with the majority? What if I say attempted three pointers? Like not actual three pointers. You know, you know what would be a good one if, if it's if it's the touchdowns and Markel Fultz three pointers. Mm. Yeah, that would be a good that? one. Want to yes. change that? Guys are changing every single <laughs> one of my <laughs> questions. 
I, well, wait a minute. Well, how many touchdowns? Oh, right, no, no. Let's go back to my question because I wrote it. So okay. Tate, okay. Well, maybe I wrote it. Maybe I stole it. You don't know. <laughs> but anyway, Tate, let's say how many touchdowns is Tate going to have? Like three? Three or four. Three, three or, or four. Yeah. yeah. All right. Three or four. And you don't think that Ben Simmons is going to just fall under the pressure. I mean, he's getting some serious pressure right now. You know, I mean, they're, they're not even like bothering to guard him in certain places. No, th- that's the issue. I mean, they, he doesn't shoot. He'd rather pass and shoot. Mm-hmm. So he's got to be practicing somewhere. He just needs to shoot. shoot. Yeah. Just yeah. shoot the ball. And maybe he does. And maybe he shoots more than three times. And then maybe he actually. You know, maybe he maybe does. He doesn't. All right, mm-hmm. let's go on. All right, here. Mid season NFL elections. What? Yes. Who is your NFL MVP? Is it Todd Gurley, Jared Goff, Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, or did I already do? Oh, Drew Brees. Gurley. Gurley. Yeah, I'd say Gurley, although Gurley? I'm thinking Mahomes. I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's in the discussion. Gurley's getting me them points every <laughs> single <laughs> Gurley, has, Gurley has all those he touchdowns. I'm, I got getting like, I'm getting like 33 points a game from that man. And he is on the end of the Nobody team, cares so. about your fantasy TV. Either. <laughs> Only me. <laughs> you and I can have our own show and just brag about our fantasy. All right, let's go on here. NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Who Ooh, are you I voting like for? 609-919-9200. Come on, guys. Give us a call. Khalil Mack. No. J.J. No. Watt. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Fletcher Cox. Donald. Donald. Aaron Donald. Donald. Man's an animal. Yeah. All right, guys. That D-line for the Rams is... Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that they have that they have, uh, that team is just stacked and they just got Dante just, Fowler and they got Fowler. Yeah, so I mean, they, just, they've yeah. been lacking edge edge rushers all season long because yeah. because they, they've actually struggled with Marcus Peters and Akeem Tlaib mm-hmm. in the secondary kind of like what what the Eagles are doing here yeah. defensive <laughs> line pressure not being consistent so, Jalen Mills is everybody's scapegoat yeah there seems to be a connection yeah, yeah. So, so 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 the same thing is actually happening with the Rams that's why they got Dante mm-hmm. Fowler Marcus Peters is having a down year people are wondering yeah. why. Well, that's why. You're not getting pressure on the quarterback. Exactly. But at the same time, I think we got to also talk about this uh, 49ers round. Yeah. Of <laughs> you know? I mean, really? Oh, uh, let's yeah. do it, Jeff. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I got to bring this up. The Raiders, the Raiders yeah. are tanking and tanking. trusting the process. That's, that's what they're doing. I, it's, that, it's, that, it's, I think it's they crazy. are. I think, I think I, they I, are. I just have to. Oh. It's it, it, it's it's amazing. Forty Nine ers going to the game. They bring in a third string quarterback, and uh, he lights up the uh, Raiders. John Gruden is just you know. Uh, but hey, you know, fans that uh, are on that side will say, "Look, he has a billion draft pick, a billion draft picks right now." It doesn't so, matter. They will get they will get Khalil Mack's replacement, mate, Nick Bosa. Yeah. So they're gonna get somebody. You <laughs> traded away literally pieces of your team. And especially, I still can't wrap my head around Amari Cooper. Why in the heck you would send him to the Cowboys of all teams? The Cowboys. I think they get a first round pick back, though. Yeah, I, I, do I mean, that, that was a bad yeah. That, that, that I mean, is a they got steal. steal. But yes. Tech, especially actually, when you look at the other receivers and what they got. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, what they netted, and then you look at what Gruden got, a first yeah. round pick. I put a poll so. actually on Facebook. Um, it was. Who is a who is the bigger disappointment this year? Is it the Raiders or is it the Giants? Giants. And I had so yeah. I yeah, don't know Giants. what do you guys think. Giants. I, I, I'd say Giants. So well, the Raiders guys, are they're doing the, the process. The, the they're Raiders, doing the process. I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how this works out because obviously the, the worst thing you can be mm-hmm. is middling and mediocrity. So right. if, if you're the Raiders, what was the best year we're going to be with with this team that you have? Eight and eight, nine and seven, ten and six. You were never going to win a Super Bowl. No. So in John Gruden's mind, he's like, all right, I'm going to build this team in my own image. We'll see what happens. Maybe he, it never materializes because <laughs> right now it, it, it's it's no. bleak and, and it's going to take a couple years, but. You know, we'll so see. why so why do you guys think the Giants? I I, I just think it's you know, the Giants really don't have a way forward. I mean, the Giants are a mess. I yeah. mean, you look at it from the top down, all the way from the top of the organization, all the way down to the Eli Manning and the mm-hmm. coach and the offense, defense. I mean, it's just it's just a mess mm-hmm. right now. That organization right now has a lot of years of rebuilding ahead of it. Yeah, they, so. there were, there were people that thought that they could be like a sleeper this year. They did. And, there were people, with, yeah, and but, they're one in seven. Oh, they're sleeping all right. They're yeah, sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're sleeping all right. They're going to be sleeping early this year. <laughs> so, so it's the bigger disappointment. 
Yeah. It's, it's the bigger shocking bigger disappointment. Shocking like the Raiders, I, 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 I think the writing was on the wall. They're going to stink a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's why. That's yeah. Why. So Jeff, going back to this game, um, <laughs> I they said Man. like C.J. Beathard, like he's not starting because he can't grip a football. Like what? I don't understand that. What is that? Because you know the coach, the coach was hiding Nick Mullins. So you know, he was just hiding just saying, him? the Nick Mullins, yeah, yeah straight assassin. Was like, this that's guy what I'm saying. So it's like you know what I mean. You know, I you never say even that heard of it, this guy. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, it was like a uh, you no, know, this this package that that uh, the 49ers were just hiding and waiting to unwrap. Like 34 to three. But you know the the fact of the matter is, you, you probably could have put out a laundry basket and beaten the uh, <laughs> and, and 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 be in Oakland. So oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I mean, Oakland is just uh, Oakland is just a mess. And Good luck you know. for, with Gruden for another nine years. Yeah, yeah. I, you and, guys signed to him. Sorry. Well, you know, if those draft picks, if all those, if, if those draft picks work out. Mm-hmm. You know, then then that's going to be a different story uh, than the. Well, group they have story. enough. So, they have like five. That's what like I'm saying. Like five in two years. Yeah. So that's going to be the that's going to be the. Uh, I'm going to let here. it play out for We're a big have to let it guy. play out and let's see yeah. what what happens here with these draft picks. Nick Mullins of Southern but Mississippi Sippy, University. Mississippi. Brett Where Favre. Brett Favre went. Yeah. So there but you go. It's, it, 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 it's just great. I think it's nice to see the 49ers just come out and actually have that type of game, especially yeah. with all the injuries. I mean, they keep putting guys on IR. It's just crazy. This kind of season is just one and one injury after another for the 49ers. So it's just nice for them to get, you know, win. They're not going to get many on this season. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. he's, he's pulling a it's Sam nice. Hinkie. Yeah. <laughs> right? Trust the process. Uh, yeah. It's like Adrian said. And oh, that's yeah. what it's saying. Same Definitely thing. feels that way. Yeah, do we have to do Twish today? Yeah, we in the should, first hour. We should do. We, uh, do we should do Twish, and okay. uh, so we'll see what's been trending this week in sports history. Welcome to This Week in Sports History, sponsored by Wildflowers Restaurant on the Painted Circle. I am Jeff Selner. Let's dive right into the history books. On November 4th in 2001, the Arizona Diamondbacks defeated the three-time defending World Series champions, the New York Yankees, in seven games to win the franchise's first ever World Series championship. Considered to be one of the greatest World Series of all time, the series included two extra inning games and three late-inning comebacks. In Game 7, the Diamondbacks staged a ninth inning comeback against Yankees closer Mariano Rivera, capped off by a walk-off, bases-loaded bloop single by Luis Gonzalez to clinch Arizona's championship victory. Diamondbacks pitchers Randy Johnson and Curt Schilling were both named most valuable players. On November 5th in 1994, in Las Vegas, Nevada, George Foreman won the WBA and IBF World Heavyweight championships by knocking out Michael Moore in the 10th round, becoming the oldest heavyweight champion in history at the age of 45. Foreman was on the comeback trail for several years after choosing to end his 10 plus year retirement. Moore was 35 and 0 entering this fight. By defeating Moore, Foreman became the first heavyweight champion to beat an opponent 19 years his junior to win a title. Boxing analysts, we miss on how Foreman had exercised a ghost in more ways than one. He had upset more in a way similar to how Ali had stunned a younger Foreman in Zaire, using toughness, savvy, and an ability to summon power at critical moments to overcome youth, speed, and power. On November 6th in 1869, Rutgers College defeated the College of New Jersey, current day Princeton University, 6-4 in what many consider to be the first gridiron game and first collegiate football game. The rules governing play were based on the London Football Association's 1863 rules that disallowed carrying or throwing the ball. For fans attending the game, the game resembled soccer rather than gridiron football. In what might be considered a beginning to college football rivalries, immediately after Rutgers won the game, Princeton players were literally run out of town by the 
the winning Rutgers students. On November 7th in 1991, Los Angeles Lakers point guard Irvin Magic Johnson announced he had tested positive for HIV virus and immediately retired from the Lakers and the NBA. In his Hall of Fame career, he averaged 19.5 points, 7.2 rebounds, and 11.2 assists per game. Magic was a five-time NBA champion, three-time NBA Finals MVP, and three-time NBA MVP. At the time, many Americans viewed AIDS as a gay white man's disease. Johnson, who is African American and heterosexual, was one of the first sports stars to go public about his HIV positive status. Today, Johnson is a prominent spokesman for AIDS awareness and a successful businessman. On November 8th in 1954, after 54 seasons in Philadelphia, the American League owners approved Arnold Johnson's request to move the A's franchise to Kansas City. The A's would win five championships while playing in Philadelphia, led by Hall of Famers Al Simmons, Jimmy Fox, Mickey Cochran, and Lefty Grove. The A's were one of the most feared teams in baseball from 1927 to 1933 under manager Connie Mack. On November 9th in 1961, the PGA Tour of America rescinded its Caucasians only rule after years of protests and legal fights by black stars Bill Spiller and Ted Rhodes. Legendary boxer Joe Lewis was also a key figure in bringing about the change following a public outcry after he was barred from a tournament. The decision paved the way for Tiger Woods to eventually dominate one of the world's most elitist sports and the last in North America and Europe to allow segregation. On November 10th in 1945, then number one army defeated number two Notre Dame 48 to nothing at Yankee Stadium before 74,621 fans. Army will go on to finish the season 9-0 and the consensus national champions. For the season, Army scored 412 points while their defense allowed just 46 points. Wow. Thank you for listening to This Week in Sports History sponsored by Wildflowers Restaurant on the Painted Circle. I am Jeff Selner. And if you're looking to watch any of the NFL games today or tomorrow, there's some great NFL action going on today. You want to go to Wildflowers Restaurant on the Paint and Circle because we all know that good food goes well with good friends. Kind of like Nancy Pelosi and Speaker of the House. Donald Trump and Oprah campaigning like it's 2020. The Boston Red Sox and winning the World Series. But what goes best with family and friends on game day or any day? That's an easy one. Wildflowers Restaurant on the Paint and Circle has 23 beers on tap, flat screen TVs in every room, and moonshine Mondays from 9 until close. Check out wildflowersinrestaurant.com for more specials, because we all know that nothing goes better with friends and family than Wildflowers on the Paint and Circle, except maybe Kevin Durant and the New York Knicks. That was good. That was Thank very you. good. Yes. I like your ad-libbing. I like, you know, the fact is, you know, I had to throw in, you know, a little something preview, you know, as we get beyond midterm elections. Actions. You know, we look to the future and, mm. you know, a little, the foreshadowing. Liberal, and a little foreshadowing and the liberals look and they try and, you know, pull Oprah in, you know, they try to nah, she's not get her. This. No, 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 no. You know, yeah, okay. I don't think so. Um, Donald Trump will try and pull her in. Donald Trump will try. Ugh, yeah. I'm not going near that guy. <laughs> All right. Put those two, put, put those two, you know, together for 2020. One on one side, one side. That would be some political debates, right? There. I really do. I really do want to see the debates. How do you? I mean, now they they should have a playbook now on how to debate Donald Donald Trump, because it's all out there. Oh, you know, what it is, is going to be the it's Republican right strategy, it's Jeff? It's all right what is going to be the strategy of the Republican Party? The just strategy to get of the Republican Party. Yeah. Just, get under, the, just get, get under the skin. Just get under the skin of the Democrats. Just get under the uh, skin of all the uh, the the liberals. And uh, okay. obviously, though, it's gonna. Well, the first step is obviously maintaining the House and the Senate. That would be the first step. But the, the House is going to be a tough, uh, tough yeah. thing at this point to it's uh, not to hold. Happen. No. Happen, but, um... but the Senate, yeah, I think the Senate will stay. If I'm making a prediction, I think the Senate will say we'll get more Republican, and I think the House will go Democratic. 
So. All right. Well, well we're going to wrap up pretty soon. I just want to let you know we are going to top of the hour. We're going to do our Heels and Heroes. So that's going to be really, really cool. And then at about 1235, we will have our coach on so we can do all our, our mental game questions there. Um, but I have um, – did you guys know that a former NFL coach uh, returned to coach in college this week? Do you know who he is? He's near and dear to your heart, Jeff. And who would that be? He was away for five years. One year as an ESPN analyst, one year as a 49ers coach, and three years as an Eagles coach. Charles Edward <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> He's back. He's back in He's college. More He's, more He's more Jays. He's more Jays. He's more Jay. Yes. He's your nemesis. Bring I know Jay. he wasn't your guy. Bring it was up, a joke. Bring up Chip Kelly. Bring up Chip Kelly with Jay, and <laughs> oh, he's God. He has a uh, love affair with him. So he, 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 you know, he, and he, he, he still likes him more than he likes Peterson, which totally makes me crazy. And Peterson won a Super Bowl. I know Peterson can't do anything. He can't win a Super Bowl. Is not good enough. I, I don't care. Chip get has it. good smoothies. It's so delicious. That's exactly what he's he used to talk to me about. He's a smoothie guy. And, he's and a they're smoothie catered guy. to each yeah. person's DNA and their spit test and all of that. And they were. Yeah. He on, made Kel. me one. They were amazing. Oh, he's amazing. He used to go on and on, Jeff, <laughs> about him. A, all he was an the absolute. Time. I will say this right now. We he went was to an CSB together disaster. and we sat in the back row, and that's all he talked about was Chip Kelly. Kelly. It's like the way you talk about Serena Williams, yes. yeah, if you happen to hear us in the, yes. <laughs> on the break. <laughs> Jeff's looking for a Serena Williams. But um, all right, so definitely um, stay tuned. We're going to do that next hour. We're going to get into gonna some have, UFC. We're also going to have Jay live from Pumpkin Chunkin'. Pumpkin Chunkin'. Pumpkin Chunkin'. Because yeah. you know what? you got to get rid of your pumpkins now because mm. uh, now it's all about Christmas, Kelly. They're really, you know? it really it, It's all about Christmas. Forget Thanksgiving, right? Um, but it's really good for the environment to, like, you know, put your pumpkins out there, too. They have a lot of good stuff to seep oh. into the earth. It's good. All right. Definitely sue us. We're just going to open with Heels of Heroes. We're going to have Jay. Come on. We're going to have the coach. We have a lot more fun coming. So stay on. 609-919-9200. And we'll take your calls. I am Jeff Soner, and my heel of the week is Baltimore Ravens running back Ty Montgomery. The Packers traded Montgomery to Baltimore for a 2020 seventh-round draft pick. The trade of Montgomery came two days after he fumbled during a kickoff return late in the fourth quarter of a 29-27 loss to the still undefeated Los Angeles Rams, rather than take a knee in the end zone. Michael Silver of NFL.com reported that Ty had been instructed by coaches to simply take a knee on the kickoff to give superstar quarterback Aaron Rodgers the opportunity to lead a comeback with just over two minutes on the clock and needing just to get into field goal range to steal the game and attempt a game-winning field goal. One Green Bay player told Silver that Montgomery had thrown a tantrum on the previous offensive series after being taken out of the game and believed that Montgomery decided to ignore his coach's orders out of anger. If Montgomery's goal was to get traded or released from Green Bay, mission accomplished. For putting himself above the team, Ty Montgomery is my heel of the week. Kelly, my hero, is an underdog, and it's not the Eagles. It's an undrafted quarterback. He's six foot one, two hundred and ten pounds, and he debuted Thursday night for the San Francisco 49ers. That would be Nick Mullins. He completed sixteen of twenty-two passes for two hundred and sixty-two yards. Three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and he shared the wealth by passing to eight different receivers. Nick Mullins, you're my hero this week. All right, for my hero of the week, it goes out to the Factory of Sadness um, front office, the Cleveland Browns, for finally getting rid of Hugh Jackson. Remember, Hugh Jackson, over his two seasons as head coach, went 3-36-1. and 36 and, one. and remember going 0-16 last year and being fired in the middle of this year, 
the Cleveland Browns have fired yet another head coach and are replacing him with Greg Williams. So will Cleveland be on the uprise? Probably not, and they will remain the factory sadness, but the Cleveland front office, you are my hero of the week. It's Adrian. Normally, I'm a bitter bird, but I am not bitter this week because Howie Roseman got me Golden Tate. Howie Roseman is my hero of the week. This is how we do it. And you look at what Howie did compared to the rest of the GMs. A first-round pick for Amari Cooper, a third and a fifth for Dante Fowler, only a third for Golden Tate. Howie Roseman, you are my hero of the week and of the century. I think that was pretty good. That was yeah. great. Good. Yes. That is how we do it. This is how, how we do it, baby. How we do it. it... <laughs> and you're giving, I, I Jay, you're giving Jay a new music song. I can go all day. This is yes. how we do it. You got to come back. Adrian, you be here next week because Jay yeah. will have the music to back that up. Uh, if Zach Ertz has a big game, then it's come on, baby, make it hurt so good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, we got the guy, Jay's got the music planned out now for the next several weeks. Yeah, yes. we're done now. Just, just shorten it a little bit, Jay. Sometimes your intros are a little long, honey. What's he coming on? He's coming on in like ten minutes, right? Ten minutes. Fly mm-hmm. from the pumpkin chunkin. So, yeah. what do you think he's doing over there right now, Jay? Probably uh, enjoying a nice adult beverage <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, learn and uh, trying to figure out how to uh, chuck a pumpkin. Learning all the intricacies. Yeah, of learning pumpkin all chunking. the injuries of pumpkin. Yes. <laughs> And uh, hopefully, you know, maybe even having a pumpkin, uh, Ooh, you know, drink a or pumpkin something. beer. Yeah, pumpkin because beer. It's still pumpkin. relevant. It's a still pumpkin. fall. Halloween still is fall. over, and and all that. So don't don't say that to the retailers, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell that to the retailers. My right kid's now. mask yes. came from China. It was guaranteed delivery by Hallow- Halloween. It came November first. Oh. It was the, this weird light up mask that just like lights up. It's like battery oh. operated. It's mm. really really freaky, <laughs> really freaky. But that was. But now you got that, that for next year. Now he's got that for next year. Yeah. There you go. So what are we doing? And uh, so I would think at this point we need to obviously uh, talk about. Ty Montgomery, uh, which is my heel of the <laughs> week, and the fact that because we want to get it, I want to get it in the first hour, but yeah. uh, we we got uh, obviously a lot of other conversation going the first hour, so I, I want to do I do want to touch on this because this was simply an amazing thing to happen here between because you could just see the reaction on the sideline from Aaron Rodgers, uh, mm. the smoke coming out of his ears. Why do uh, I have when, a feeling it had something to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just Ooh, look. I, I think he theory. obviously Aaron yeah. Rodgers was angry. Oh yes, he was angry, and, and the coach couldn't have been a. And the coach uh, after the game basically uh, threw Ty under the bus. Yeah. So it, it definitely was going uh, south for Ty Montgomery. But if it, like I said, in my uh, as my heel, if he wanted to. Uh, mission accomplished if you want to get traded or released because he definitely did and going to Baltimore is not uh, you know uh, a good place for him to be of course Baltimore is not a bad team but mediocre mediocre so it's there always that like 8-8 eight eight. yeah 8-8 yeah, 9-7 eight, so, eight, 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 so yeah. I, I don't see Ty having a good uh, impact on that team and no. def- definitely you know I, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised because when you look at it the fact that he would throw uh, a Rogers t- throw a tantrum and then go rogue and actually uh, take the ball out of the end zone and, and not give his quarterback, not give his star quarterback a chance to mm-hmm. win. That's just. And you're a uh, professional football player and you're throwing a tantrum. Yeah, like you're supposed to be you, an you icon taking, to young you were, athletes. Because you were taken out of the game, you're throwing a tantrum on the sideline, yeah. and then you get it into your you get into your head. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna take this kickoff and I'm going. You know, out of the end zone. And like, young, and then it really ended up bad for him because they, he fumbled the ball. Yeah. So. And young athletes, like, look up to, you know, professionals. And you're hurt. You're only hurting your own image do, by doing that. It's the self-centeredness that it, it's around all the NFL teams and not just NFL. It's other. Yeah, because you were going off on Draymond earlier, being mm. a baby. Well, I mean, that's that's like my own opinion just from yeah. what I've I've seen of him. But um, 
I know you could counteract me on that because right. I know you're a big Golden State fan. I and just enjoy it. I, yeah. I no, no, just, I'm not. I'm not, uh, not at all. Not no, at all. I'm, I'm just absolutely. Like, he care. He carries the emotion of the entire team. Yes, I, oh, I yeah. get that. And he's the outlet. He's the bad guy. You got. I think every team needs to have a, a bad guy. It's the reason I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. it's the, the reason enforcer. I don't watch the. Yeah, I, yeah. I just I, I don't and I don't watch the it. NBA because like the Warriors are just always always you, winning. You, you got to be like Joel Embiid, get some real estate in somebody's head. Yeah. Oh, that was so cool. That was, a, that was so hilarious. Jay, Jay yes. got that. Jay got that audio, didn't he? Like, Jack? is it yeah. possible for other teams to beat them? He's now taking up space. I mean, He's now we're not going to see Cavs Warriors, thankfully, yeah. in the finals anymore because LeBron's gone. Yeah, yeah that, be that's Celtics not happening. Warriors. Could be Celtics Warriors. Yeah, Raptors or Raptors. If Toronto could get past the Sixers, if Toronto could get past the second round, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's you know we know that history. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I'm not buying the start. I need to see it in April. I think the East is is pretty exciting. I think the East is really you, you don't know. We got some teams that, yeah, Milwaukee looks really good. Yeah, the Bucks look great. I saw the pa- Pacers. You got, well, yeah, Pacers Oladipo, Sabonis, Sabonis is looking Sabonis. really good. We, yeah, we Gonzaga. play the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Gonzaga. Sixers play the Pacers on Wednesday. Okay. It's going to be a good game. Yeah, That's going to be fun. Yeah. So yeah. what about this uh, Golden State game against Chicago a couple days ago? 92 points in 92 the first half. 92 points in the first half, In the Kelly. first half. Yeah. It's like... Kelly, do did, did, did they yeah. even need a head coach out there? I knew there? you were going to ask really me that. I knew you were going to yes. ask me that. Yeah, <laughs> you got to understand, he, he's, a, he's a humble guy, but he's, right. he's brilliant. He's mm-hmm. a complicated, layered guy. He's a f- former player himself. Yep. Um, remember how his dad died when he was in college? Mm-hmm. You know, his dad actually died uh, overseas as like an ambassador. He was like killed. Um he, these guys have, are so big and so talented mm-hmm. and have so much personality and so much ego. And the fact that he can control them every year and somehow r- just have a whole new process each year, a whole new goal for them. Like, remember when they, when they didn't win and they lost to Cleveland, like they, they, you know, their goal was, you know, this many games, we're going to break the record, you know? And then the next year they, they're like, okay, we're not doing that. We're we're not going to kill ourselves. We got to be like alive and healthy for the playoffs. And, you know, and this year they're just like on a whole other level. I think, I think they, they need him, but maybe it's, it's just a really amazing connection he has with those guys. Steve Kerr is definitely a legitimate head coach because yeah. even when you go back a couple years ago when they didn't have Kevin Durant and they won their first NBA championship. Yeah, with these guys who are like third round yeah, picks. And, and, and before you know. he got there, Mark Jackson could never get him past right. the second round. So, right. Right. of course, Steve Kerr was an upgrade. But And again, one, one other thing I do want to mention uh, before we get to Jay, obviously coming up uh, after our break, is the fact that the Boston Red Sox did win the World Series. Congratulations to the Boston Red Sox. They won in five games. It wasn't as thrilling as all that. Am I supposed to care? Yeah. Do I care? Well, that's the thing. I know, Mike, I know Boston is not high on your list. No, because so. uh, like, when I saw that yeah. they won, I'm just like, oh, great, Boston, another Boston team wins a championship. Yay! Well, they, you know, it's like the old, it's like they say, break out the duck boats, you know. Ellie but didn't did you see, show but up. you see the fact that the guy actually, one of the fans during the parade actually threw a beer yeah, and actually yeah. dented the uh, yeah. The Dodgers the didn't even show up, though. Where were they? <laughs> Where was Clayton Kershaw? Well, they were there Clayton for 18 Kershaw. innings Clayton for Kershaw. Game Three I'll tell you or Game right Four. Now. It was Game Four, but I'll <laughs> tell you something three. right now. Clayton Kershaw got paid because he's back with the Dodgers. Yes, he is. So yeah. Clayton Kershaw did, in fact, even though he hasn't performed well in the playoffs so far, the Dodgers did bring him back. So, uh, and free agency is well underway, and of course in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of anticipation there, regarding there, the Phillies. Two guys. Yeah. There's two, there's two guys. Names. Harper versus Machado. Mm. And, you know, I know there are people who look at Machado and say, oh my gosh, do I really want this guy on my team? And I'm saying, why would you not want this well, guy? Well, he's always on your been team? a prick. This he's is nothing been a new. Prick. <laughs> right. He's always been. But you know what? I think if he's, he's playing, a little bit. I'm telling you right now. You know, if you have Chase Utley, you were, Chase Utley played for this team and he was a prick. He broke a, he broke the leg of a player going into second base. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, look, when he's playing for your team, you're fine with it. You're cool with yeah. what Machado does. So I, I think, and this guy is gonna, this guy hits. He he gets to the World Series. Got the out got the Dodgers of the World Series. Yeah, I think the Phillies could use but then uh, you have, Machado. Then you have Bryce Harper, who's a complete just hothead, and can like. The shortest fuse I've ever seen. It can go off any second. 
I, th- I think what? Philly would love him, though, because well, of the great well, that's, that's that he plays with. Oh, yeah. which, okay. which free agent do you think the Phillies will sign? I think Har- Harper. Manny? Harper. I think it's Harper. Harper, both or neither. But you know what? But, you <laughs> know, here's the issue, though. There are so many. The thing that I just tug with is that there are so many connections in the Eagles' front office with, uh, with Machado that it's kind of like, are those guys going to – get in there and get together and because I know they really wanted Machado at the deadline. I mean, they really made a big push to try and get Machado at the, at the, at the trade dead, uh, deadline. So it'll be interesting to see if those forces come out again and bring Machado onto, onto this team uh, over Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is a good player. I think Bryce Harper yeah. is a good player. I, I, I think he, he has a boatload of talent. Certainly, the, certainly they could use an outfielder, no question. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Machado is just to me one just one of those players that uh, just you know he's a I, risk. I, I, he's a risk. But at the same time, I look at this. I I I just I have this feeling that the that the Phillies front office are is is looking at Machado and they're saying this is the guy that we want to build uh, build our team around. And they need to and uh, like the Sixers, who I thought was going to go star hunting, and we talked about that. We all remember that in the all season for the Sixers. Now it's the Phillies' turn to go star hunting, and yeah. and you know, and That's you know good. the owner wants to go out and spend money, so mm-hmm. and spend a ton of it. So this, it's, it's either that, or you know, the Yankees are going to go out and, and sign somebody because you know the Yankees. Now they're not going to sign Harper because there's no room in the outfield right now for. They Harper. don't need him. No, they, they, they don't. They, need I think they, 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 they might go Machado because it's yeah. Gregorius' yeah. injury. They got, they got they got yep. Judge. Yeah, and uh, if Stan comes well, you back know what? too, nothing annoys Yankee fans more than seeing the Boston Red Sox win a World Series. Yeah. So you know that's uh, <laughs> that tugs. So that, do you think uh, they Yankee have a fans. better chance at Machado because of the history, or do you think it's Harper? <sighs> I think it's I think it's Machado. Okay, I think I think it's Machado. Nobody say There's, Machado. I the, think. The, the I, reports... I think I would love to see Harper on this team because I think he's he's a little bit better fit. Yeah, but this front yeah. office, though, when you look at the history of the guys who came from Baltimore that that, that have been in the front office, uh, I just happen to believe that there's uh, a real push. There's going to be a real push to get Machado yeah. onto this team. I think so they we'll they will get one of the two. Yeah. I really do think that this four years in the making, we've been waiting for this. <laughs> And the problem is right now, after that disaster end of into the season, they need something right now to oh, reinfuse, yeah. to, re, to relight the fire. Four to close the year. To I mean, you need you need to put that in the rearview mirror and to light the fire. No. And, and there's certainly a lot of decisions that are going to have to be made. Obviously, um, regarding this team, where certain players go, what positions they play. We all mm-hmm. know that there's a lot of merry-go-round that that could go on during this off season for the Phillies. And it's going to depend a lot upon who they get. If they get Harper, then there's a merry-go-round in the outfield and moving some guys around. And then, of course, they get Machado. He can play two positions, which is not a bad thing. So we'll see. We're, uh, so you're going with A Machado? Yeah, I'm going with Machado. I think I think the Phillies will get. Uh, I think the Phillies will ultimately sign Machado, even though I would like them to sign Go Harper. Harper. Go Harper. <laughs> yes. Because that uh-huh. that hurts. Because you know what? That hurts. You know, because I, I don't really want to see Harper go back to Washington. So yeah, the reports are mm-hmm. saying it's down to three teams. Yeah. We'll see. It's it's the Giants, the yeah. Phillies, and the Nationals. Finals. There's always like another surprise team, uh, whoever that might be. But those are the three teams being listed right now. It, and it, it never, odds, su- never surprised me that the Giants are uh, swimming around yeah. in these things. Well, they're the ones that got Barry Bonds right. twenty years ago when exactly. nobody expected it. So yes, you know. But it's always funny because a lot of people say, oh, you know, I want to get uh, Machado, but I want to get him at a, at a good price. Forget that. <laughs> I mean, come yeah, on. There, you there, you there, don't want to do. There's come no on. salary cap in baseball. No it's not your baseball. money. Yes, yeah. it's, not your money. Yeah. it's not your money. Go Stop out there it. and go out there and spend for this That's guy. That's silly. Yes. <laughs> they, they, you know, they're all on. the heels of the week. All you know, of them. They're all, they're all, uh, come on, you, you look at this team. This team has been uh, cheap for, 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 for a year. Go out there and spend, you know, go out there and get, you know, a big time bat in your yeah. lineup. Go yes. get it. Go make baseball exciting in Philadelphia again. So uh, we're going to take a break cool. right now, and then we're going to bring on another bitter bird, I think, in my brother <laughs> right now. Cause, in cause my he brother. Because he, uh, he, was, he was stuck uh, watching some WWE pay-per-views over the past <laughs> week, so he's going to vent on that. This so, is my cue to leave. Right, so we're going to come back. Because uh, I know he's going to be lamenting the, the wing ball, too.
Yes, Wing Bowl, oh, obviously, he's, he's, he's sad about Wing Bowl. So there's a lot that my brother has to lament this week. So right. we'll come back, uh, and uh, we'll come back with my brother, Jay Soner. You're listening to the Sports Skillet Radio Show, cooking up all the hot takes. Jump in and join us at 609-919-9200. Download our app at sportsskilletradio.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube by searching for Sports Skillet. And remember to show us some love. Make sure you like, follow, and share. Remember the TV show Cheers, where everybody knows your name? Never been there. But every time I walk into Wildflowers Restaurant on Pennington Circle, I feel at home and that I belong. Friday night, I headed over to Wildflowers, and even though it was packed, I easily found a seat at the bar and got cozy with 17 TVs. Baseball, golf, entertainment TV, you name it, including all NFL games. The bartender Dave suggested I order the Buffalo Wing Sampler, and you could tell he was a fervid fan. But reviews on Wildflowers and Restaurant Facebook page demanded... I tried the garbage truck pizza, and Kelly had just arrived and promised to help me dig in. Then it came. Garbage truck pizza does not live up to its name because it smells amazing and it tastes even better. Freshly sliced peppers and pepperoni, garlic, mushrooms, mozzarella, and meatballs all baked on this incredibly crunchy and warm double crust to hold it all together perfectly. Heaven, especially with one of their 23 beers on tap. I'm a believer. Go to wildflowersinrestaurant.com for more info or just come in. They are conveniently located on the Pennington Circle, right near I-95. I promise you, they will welcome you warmly, feed you well, and perhaps soon, even know your name. You're listening to the Sports Skillet Radio Show, cooking up all the hot takes. Jump in and join us at 609-919-9200. Download our app at sportskilletradio.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube by searching for Sports Skillet. And remember to show us some love, like, follow, and share. Welcome back. We always could spot a friend. Hey guys, welcome back to 920 The Jersey Here Sports Skillet Radio. We got Jay Selner on the phone with us live from Pumpkin Chuck. And how you doing, Jay? I am doing awesome. It sounds like a great show so far this week. And Jay, I just got to say one thing to you before we uh, get into some of your questions. How do you feel about after that Panthers game? Uh, I wish the Eagles would have won it. Would have made life a lot <laughs> easier for them. But uh, it sucks blowing a 17 point fourth quarter lead. Yeah, I just had to get that out of the way. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're talking about this WWE pay per view that you apparently watched. Uh, do you want to comment about that? Because you sounded pretty bitter. I am bitter about it. It was one of the worst uh, WWE Mm pay-per-views of all time, Mm -hmm. talking about uh, Crown Jewel, Mm -hmm. and it was just absolutely dreadful. Nothing to remember the (laughs) pay-per-view about. The matches were okay at best, and uh, putting the belt back on Brock Lesnar was a absolutely atrocious decision. Mm -hmm. Shane McMahon winning... (laughs) The World Cup was even worse than that. It was horrible. It was absolutely disgusting. And I'm just uh, like my friend Ben said on the way down here to the pumpkin chunk. And I'm glad I didn't have to spend 50 bucks on it and only spent $10 for the uh, WWE Network. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's you saved uh, <laughs> saved a lot of money there. Exactly. It was uh, anybody who paid 
the forty nine ninety five or the fifty bucks for this absolutely <laughs> completely got robbed mm-hmm. and should demand their money back from the WWE. Do you demand your money back? Not gonna get it, but they should demand it back. <laughs> All right, and uh, beginning of the show, we also talked about um, the Eagles rec- acquiring Golden Tate in uh, the trade deadline. Um, Adrian was pretty excited about that. Yeah, I'm pumped up. Uh, what are your he thoughts even, about he it? He even has a pun, Jay. You gotta I, I, hear his I've pun. Got, I've got like no, eighteen hundred puns. Hear, you gotta hear Adrian's pun. So mm-hmm. he's the golden receiver in the golden era of Eagles football, and Howie Roseman didn't break the golden rule of trading by giving up a first round pick for Amari Cooper. How about that, in, Jay? You like that? Exactly, and it proves <laughs> me right against your buddy Chainsaw that the Eagles have <laughs> gone after, gone after L. Bell, and that Howie Roseman once again did the absolute right thing. He gave up a third-round pick for a wide receiver who's going to help him just as much, if not more, than L. Bell would. So once again, Chainsaw was wrong. I was right, and mm-hmm. the Eagles made an absolutely wonderful decision by picking up Golden Tate. You know who didn't make the right decision? That was Vince McMahon. And, and I wanted to ask you this question. <laughs> is is he trolling the fan base on purpose at this point? Like, are, are they in the meeting rooms like, all right, what's the worst possible thing that we could do? Shane McMahon wins the World Cup. Are you serious? This is this is supposed to go to the best in the world. And, and Shane McMahon wins this thing? What is this, Jay? Uh, like I said before, it was an absolutely atrocious decision. Whoever booked that, uh, whoever booked that card, should absolutely be left back in Saudi Arabia <laughs> to, to live their life in solitude, you know, over there. And I, I, you know, the only thing I can think of is the ratings went down a little bit for Monday Night Raw. So <sighs> all, mm. so all of a sudden, Vince McMahon is thinking, well, maybe if I bring back Brock Lesnar as champion again. He might spike the ratings, but the only problem with that is Brock Lesnar only wrestles when he wants to. And, and only he only wrestles on for five minutes at a time. <laughs> yeah. He did five moves in that match, five F5s, and that was your, your finish, and he's the new champion. Exactly. Despicable. It was absolutely pathetic. <laughs> and, Jay, of course, uh, we got to mention Wing Bowl, obviously, coming to a close, the announcement coming this week, obviously a decision made due to the fact that the Eagles won the Super Bowl. So because the Eagles won the Super Bowl, there is no Wing Bowl anymore. That was kind of the uh, impetus for shutting down Wing Bowl and the fact that, well, since the Eagles won, there really isn't a point to Wing Bowl at at this point. Um, So I ask you, Jay, would you rather have seen, would you rather have had the Eagles win a Super Bowl or would you rather still have Wing Bowl going on? Oh, that's a toughie. Of course (laughs) I'd rather see the Eagles win a Super Bowl. I mean, that was, you know, that might never have happened. I mean, people were talking about the Eagles never winning the Super Bowl, and I'm glad to have just seen at least one Eagles Super Bowl in my lifetime. I had to wait, uh, what, 48 years, 47, 48 years for it, but still, you know, seeing an Eagles Super Bowl. But I'm very sad to see Wing Bowl go. It was part of the Philadelphia landscape for part of the culture. Uh, yeah. You know, it gave us an like excuse to drink years. at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what? It, it gave, gave us an excuse to drink at six o'clock in the morning. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> drink, have, you know, chickies and pizza. Oh, the crab fries. fries. Yes. I mean, just absolute party. Begin the weekend a, a day early, you know, take off Friday, have a blast for Super Bowl weekend. I mean, it was it was just part of the Philadelphia, you know, lexicon or, you know, what have you. And, and then, just not having it is going to be an empty feeling, I think, uh, this year when that Friday rolls around. And then, of course, you know, you got to talk about Molly and, of course, Bill Owingador Simmons. Oh, yeah. Two great wing bowl champions, Molly, Skyler. Okay. Uh, wing Bowl icon, you know, Wing or Simmons, has his jersey retired and hung up in the rafters. I mean, think about that. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's in the rafters right now of the... Uh, it's in the rafters with Wilt Chamberlain, with Chamberlain and, yes. and <laughs> Julius Irving. Mm-hmm. What a legend, and Bill at uh, Wing and Door Simmons. Simmons. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was the first guy that won multiple Wing Bowls, and then you had Molly Schuyler coming in to dominate at the very mm-hmm. end. Um, I mean, it was a really 
fun event to go to. I know some people, you know, thought that it was not really cool or whatever. I always considered it fun. I always liked it. I enjoy going to it. But I can understand with some people it's not their cup of tea, but it was really fun to go down there and just see everybody having fun uh, the Friday before Super Bowl Sunday. And it's amazing what comes out of the head of WIP's Al Morgani. I mean, that was uh, his genius uh, who came up with it. And, uh, boy, uh, twenty say it, went, it lasted 26 years, which is not a bad run. No. When you consider it, I mean, um, Adrian, uh, the bitter bird there, Adrian, uh, could probably attest to this, too. I don't know of any other radio promotion that lasted for 23 years that constantly year after year would fill up a uh, stadium year after year after year, have people clamoring to go for it and selling out uh, an actual stadium or an arena. I don't know of any other promotion that's been as successful as Wing Bowl. Not only that, not only that, but you look at the celebrities that they were able to bring in as well. Ric Flair last year. Woo! <laughs> yeah, Rick Foley. I mean, yeah. Rick, Rick Flair. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but Chip Kelly was there one year. <laughs> <laughs> See, we were getting in with Chip Kelly. Yeah. We are going to bring in Chip Kelly he, with he, you. He's you know. working again. He's, he's coaching working. again, yeah. Jay. Do you know that? Yeah, not very well, but he's coaching again. <laughs> two, he's back. They're 2-7 two and seven at UCLA. He is, he is doing better he's than Gruden. Yeah. yeah, he's got one more <laughs> win than him. He's he got to trust the process over there in Oregon. Yeah. So, Jay, uh, what are you thinking about as you uh, think about this bye week coming up here for the Eagles and uh, you look at Dallas? What are your expectations? Well, I think what's going to happen is the Eagles are going to work Golden Tate to the bone, and I think Golden Tate wants to be worked to the bone, just getting his head into the Eagles' playbook and then starting this week practicing with the team. Hopefully they can get him on the field for a few plays uh, next Sunday against the uh, Dallas Cowboys. I also like the fact that when is Dallas playing? Tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Dallas is coming off of a short week, so that favors the Eagles again. Eagles will have, you know, an extra, had this extra week to prepare for the Dallas Cowboys in a must win game for the Eagles because. Eagles sitting at four losses, can't afford to lose too many more games, especially division games. So give the Eagles a little bit of a break to get their minds back in it, to uh, get their bodies rejuvenated, some rest, some rehab, hopefully get some of these injured guys back on the field again, like a uh, Darren Sproles, which I think having Darren Sproles in the backfield and Golden Tate at wide receiver, that's going to be uh, – an interesting matchup that teams will have to deal with going forward. And who are you rooting for this afternoon in the biggest, one of the biggest games really of the season right now as it's shaping up? Because this could be obviously for home field advantage right now when you look at it. Uh, Rams versus the Saints. Oh, I thought you were going to say Patriots versus uh, Packers. Packers. Oh, no, There's not two great games today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's it's a perfect week for a bye week if you're an Eagles fan, yeah. really. Oh yeah. But the oh, to, to me, to to me, you know, the the Packers are kind of shooting themselves right now. Yeah. So, no. and the Patriots is going to be there to pick up the scraps uh, in New England. <laughs> yeah, I think I would go Patriots there, and I would go probably. Uh, I'm going to go Saints in the other game just because um, the Saints want to get home field advantage in the playoffs. And if they lose this one to the Rams, they could be looking at going on the road and possibly to L.A. But sometimes going to L.A. is a home game for mm -hmm. visiting teams. So, you know, but uh, I'm sure the uh, Saints would like to uh, – Win this one, seize home field advantage at least for a little bit. You know, they got a game coming up against the Eagles. That'll be fun um, within the next couple of weeks. So um, I think this game is probably a little bit more important for the New Orleans Saints. So I'm going to go with Saints in that one. And, of course, this week, while we have Mike here on the show, obviously, uh, this coming Thursday, the Carolina Panthers are headed to Pittsburgh. That's going to be another good game. Both top, teams be need game. it. Yeah. Hey, Jay, you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, we lost yes. you. He's back. Hello? 
Jay, you there? Hello? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Were you were you chucking a pumpkin, or <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, we're actually just getting set up. I'm going to take some videos once this whole thing gets started. We're going to have a lot of fun here. Well, what does and, it look uh, like? Is it like a huge lever, or like what is this thing? What is this like? Give us a picture. Well, e- people can bring their own launcher. Uh, we got one launcher already here. Um, it looks like a kind of catapult thing to uh, launch the pumpkins into the water or at a target, one or the other. So uh, we're going to be getting underway here shortly, but um, I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, I'm going to post a bunch of pictures, and and what a great day to be trunking pumpkins into a lake. Yes, I mean, it's a bright, <laughs> sunny day. Uh, we want you to enjoy yourself, have some fun. Thanks, Jay, for coming out. Appreciate it. Okay, anytime, and I'll be hopefully back in the studio again next week. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. Did he just say hopefully? Like, this is the first show he's ever missed. (laughs) Like, ever. And, and, I mean, he was struggling all week with it. He might like it so much that he's not (laughs) here. (laughs) He just decides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the subtle hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of. He's foreshadowing there. He's now become a professional pumpkin chunkin. Our dude. But no, we, he was struggling with it, wasn't he, Jeff? He was struggling. I mean, there he was, was like, can you yes. come on, Kel? Can you come on? You think? I don't know. I'm torn. Like, you got to go be with Sandy, right? His friend Sandy. Yeah. Yeah. He's so got to go be with Sandy. Yes. And uh, it's, it's got to be fun to uh, let off some anger, you know, let those pumpkins <laughs> go, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. Feel good. yeah. Although they go in the water. I want to see him splat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's like, a little disappointing. Like like, like, yeah. the ga- like Gallagher when he used to yeah. smash the watermelons. Right. I want to see those smashed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to see a mess. <laughs> oh, God. He's scaring me today. He's so <laughs> bitter today. Yeah. 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 We have smashing, uh, pu- smashing pumpkins. We're gonna play some smashing there you pumpkins. Go. <laughs> we are, of course, right. waiting on the coach Shane McGowan, and uh, we'll have him on. Uh, and he's hopefully... doing another show. Yes, he is. He's he, he is he's getting like around doing these UFC. days. You he know? never stops. stops. Yeah, he needs to take a vacation. That's the thing. He's you know, coming over here. He's coming over. He's he's flying out this week too to L.A. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's it, it, that's the thing. I mean, Shane is really getting pretty to be uh, a like little maybe too big, big for us. Yes. You know? <laughs> How are we going to keep him? Should we send him a T-shirt? Send him a t- <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Oh, he said he's on air. Wait, I'm on air. He just said he's on air. What does oh, that so mean? I guess that is him on the no, line. Ah, sorry, Shane. Okay. So I have him on the line. See, the phone board has been ringing all like this Pretend whole show. Like it's been, it's he, been a little weird. Oh my God, so, I was talking about him and he heard me. <laughs> so he, well, let me do a proper introduction. You do the intro. Here. So yes. th- this would be funny if this isn't him now, but, but let's <laughs> see. Uh, well, let's go live on the air where Coach tackles our most sizzling topics of the week. Shane Wright for USA Today High School Sports. He is host of Shut the Puck Up podcast on Blog Talk Radio. Follow him on Insta at Shane7551, mentaledgeperformance.ca. The coach Shane McGowan joins us as he does every week. Coach, how you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great after he listened to you guys there. I've been on hold. I heard all the comments. Oh, my this is God. Fantastic. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I know it was Shane. No, I'm doing, yeah, at least I'm it's doing Shane. Great, guys. What if it was wasn't? Awesome. I, yeah. I also heard Jay. Jay smashing some cum. He's actually, you know, Shane, he's actually getting some exercise. You should be proud. All right. That's even better. Yes. Wait, is there a hot dog involved? In the <laughs> I don't <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some pumpkin pie. pie. Everybody is like on fire. Oh, boy. But, yeah, uh, pumpkin pie. You gotta love it. Let's, uh, let's get started here, Shane, obviously, because there was obviously some uh, news that came down this week uh, out of Maryland, obviously, with DJ Durkin. Uh, obviously, he was fired after his brief reinstatement uh, as, as head coach. Um, my... My focus here, not necessarily on DJ Durkin, but more on the strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, there was a great segment on Real Sports uh, with Brian Gumble uh, that really went over uh, these uh, and really uh, took these strength and conditioning coaches to the woodshed, really, uh, for the fact that most, you know, for the eye popping thing that the certification, which is a third, uh, 13 hour course, uh, does not teach anything about uh, heat stroke or player safety, like getting players into an ice bath once they start suffering from heat stroke. Uh, Shane, what's your opinion on this? 
Well, and that's that's the whole thing is the education part of this, right? I mean, as a as a coach, you know, mental game coach and dealing with athletes, I've also been and have to get certified through up here in Canada, uh, weekly, um, monthly, and things like that on on concussion protocols and everything else too that go with it. And to me, this is stuff that's needed if you're going to deal in sports with everybody and every kind of athlete. But if you're a head coach, trainer, assistant coaches. Uh, and I mean, we're starting to see a lot of that too, especially people that are not even being paid, uh, not having the right qualifications when it comes to the health of these athletes. And mm-hmm. I, to me, that that onus is on that program itself that needs to make sure that you are getting certified, qualified people in there for situations like that. And I mean, they really need to take note of it because look at, they're not the first school and they're not going to be the last. And it goes with every program, whether it be basketball, whether it be the football, hockey, it doesn't matter. Everybody needs to be understanding of what can happen and how to deal with certain situations ASAP so it doesn't happen like this anymore. Because these players are dying uh, literally on the field, and the, the reports are that these a lot of these players could be saved by simply getting them into an ice bath immediately and uh, lowering their body temperature. And that's the first thing that you do. That's, that's the absolute first thing that should be out there on hand. And, and I mean, look at we all understand when you're playing in the heat. And here's the other thing, too, we forget about is a lot of times when you're in the stadiums uh, in certain places on how hot it gets down there, too. They need to have the right staff down there keeping these guys hydrated before they're getting out there. That's why there's so many injuries of cramping and, and muscle tears and, and et cetera. So, like I said, very uneducated, and they need to get themselves on the right track here if they want to be successful. Do you think it's the competition between all these programs at, in college, the fact that uh, these, these programs are all want, trying to one-up each other? You know, honestly, it, to me, it just becomes more of common sense. It becomes, look at this is what we are dealing with, and this is the nature of, of our sports and everything. We need to be educated to help in case of situations like this of the 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 uh the heat stroke or or the tears or the pulls or whatever's going on even the concussion protocols too i mean they need to understand all of this stuff and really it's it's an education process that has to be done by the by the athletic the directors and the, the head of the deans and everybody like that because you cannot have this tarnished at your school and these coaches should also be doing it on their own time too getting themselves educated Shane, uh, as I do every week, I uh, take your pulse on the Oakland Raiders. Shane, oh. it's uh, this is really bad right now when you're losing to not when you not, it's it's been uh, when you it's been up to lose a game, but when the 49ers put out a third string quarterback out there and you get blasted, that's pretty. This is getting pretty bad. You know what? Like I said to you guys a few weeks ago, I, I got that cup that's supposed to light up on touchdowns, and it, it hasn't lit up. I've checked the batteries. I've done everything possible. This thing just does not light up at all. And, and again, it is a fire sale out there. We just released Bruce Irvin. I mean, like I said, Gruden, Gruden has taken upon himself to saying, that's it. We're just going to rebuild. We're going to go for the number one draft pick, and we've got two more, and then we've got three next year, so on and so on. This is just a terrible rebuilding. But, I mean, to be humiliated like that by San Francisco from a third string just shows how weak you are on your defense and how much you have, have sacrificed. But, again, is I'm a player on that team. I'm looking going, what am I doing here? Because I don't understand this at all. This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I want to be part of. And he's going to start losing that in that locker room if things don't get a little bit better of what his plan is for the future because like I said you got guys sitting there just shaking their heads going I don't know about this and yet he's gone on on and has said people are calling him to say hey I want to come play for the Raiders now is he tampering again that's something they're going to look into in the league but I just find it hard to believe that people want to come play from for the Raiders right now because of everything that's happening yeah, but Shane, maybe on the flip side, he has a lot of freedom that other coaches and GMs don't have because he has this contract and he can just rebuild from scratch. He's got all these picks coming up. He's got five of them coming up over the next two years. So maybe he's just pulling a Sam Hinky. Oh, he is. There's no question about that. He's got he's got more freedom than anybody else uh, when it comes to this. But the problem that I that I that I'm seeing though is is you could have all that freedom at least show some competitiveness out there on your team when you are playing on the, you know, during the week. Because, again, it's the fans, it's the fan base that also is taking care of this, and they are losing that in a big way. And, and like I said, to me, to have enough, uh, enough 
uh, pull like he does to say, well, I can trade this guy, I can do this, I can do that is one thing. But again, you got to be a competitive team because, like I said, you're going to lose players after that as well. And you're going to ask these players to start taking pay cuts. You're like, you want me to take a pay cut on a losing team already? Like, I don't know about this. So there's going to be a little bit of turmoil, if not already in that locker room, but at the end of the season as well. All right, but hey, your Rockets are better than the Sixers. You must be happy about that. Raptors. My, I'm my, sorry, Raptors. My I'm sorry. No, oh, my Raptors. I have a cold. Oh. My, I'm on like Sudafed and coffee. That's just it right now. I have no idea what I'm saying. Raptors. Oh, no. The Raptors. You guys freak. You guys bring Kelly on and she's intoxicated. I'm intoxicated. Hey, we didn't it know. was the last minute. Oh, well, no, the guy, the kid next to me hasn't even gone home yet. How old are you? Did you just say I'm 22. 22. He's 22. Know, he's, no he hasn't even been home yet. He's in like flip flops and a tank top. <laughs> oh, it's a mess over here well, today, Shade. We need your help. I know, Shade. We need your help. Yeah. But no, I have. I know. I, I noticed that Jay's just shaking his head going, I can't believe I live for one day and this happened. I know. Well, he's gone. He's gone. We're playing, playing right. No, well, let's get to Markel though, because last time I talked to you, I I was giving him a hard time. So, you know, I, I really wanted to be wrong about him. And you know what, Shane? He is he's is a lot of fun. He's he's showing his athleticism. Markel Fultz, his his wingspan we talked about earlier. It's like seven feet two inches, which is insane. We're seeing his length out there. Um, People are now clamoring on Twitter that they want more of him. He really brings this really awesome energy. He seems to no longer fear. I mean, he, he, he I think he's, we thought maybe he was afraid of contact. He's not. He loves it. He's just attacking the basket. So why is it important that these athletes don't overthink a game? And then how do you, how do you not overthink a game? Well, I think right now is that he's starting to find his own groove. He's starting to find his style of playing, which is the first thing that he needed to do. And now that he's done that, he's always had it in him, but he's allowed to bring it out. The coaches are letting him do his thing. His his uh, teammates out there are following his lead in that way as well. But he, you're right. When it comes to the overthinking part, as long as he just does his job the way he knows how to, and he sees everybody around him, so if he's got to dish the ball, whatever is, whatever is there, he's going to be okay. And I think he's found that comfort. And that's a big thing. He's found the comfort out there night in and night out uh, at the different, uh, different arenas too. So he's okay with it. He's not afraid to attack, which I think is his biggest thing was I'm not, he's got no fears of that. Doesn't matter who he's going against. So if he can overcome those things, he's just going to keep playing better and better and stronger and stronger. And that's what you want out of him right now. Now you need the rest of the guys there to pick up that pace too and say, look at, we've got him going. Now we got to get ourselves going as well too. And I think when they start doing that, he starts to take his level up even higher. So it's it's an all-around process that it's a team effort, and that's what you're seeing right now is that team effort. All right, last question for you about the Eagles. Of course, we have the addition of Golden Tate. We're talking about Sproles maybe coming back next week um, to join Ertz, Alshon, and Aguilar. Do you think that Golden Tate can help our Eagles regain the enchantment of last year? Uh, well, I think I think Golden State is a big addition. There's no question about that. I think he's going to do everything he can, depending on what the play packages are for him. You've got talent. He's a talented man out there. So, I mean, that's a huge, huge plus. They wouldn't go after him if they didn't think that he could contribute in some ways that they need. Now it just comes down to can defensively, can that team play the way they're supposed to? And I think that's what they got to look at because if, if uh, your offense is rolling like they should be able to with the running back, uh, you know, Wentz is still able to stand up in the pocket. And he's got some more targets out there. You're going to get some offensive scoring. Defensively, though, you got to keep those teams off the scoreboard. And I think that's what they're looking at with a little bit of struggle. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do and how they try to change that up a little bit. Because I think right now, that's the weakest link is playing the defensive side on the, especially because I haven't seen as much pressure on quarterbacks as there should be. So I think they're going to be looking at this and trying to do different little stunts to, to get that team rolling. All right, that'll be cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you one of our polling questions. Of course, here in the States, we have our midterm elections on Tuesday. So we are doing polls here. So I'm going to give you my uh, one of my questions today, Shane. Which number will be higher? Golden Tate's touchdowns as an Eagle this year or Ben Simmons' attempted three-pointers this year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna say gold. I'll say golden. Everybody's taking golden. Say, yeah. Shane, I was counting on you. All right, we're gonna let you go. We're, so what do you? Whatever. What do you? Uh, so so tell us what you're doing this week. 
Uh, okay, Kelly, I'll take I'll take Ben Simmons uh, just to make you happy because you're under the weather. But, <laughs> yeah. No, I, actually, this week I'm leaving uh, Wednesday. I'm off to L.A. Um, I got a, uh, one of my clients out there who's on the TV show, The, uh, the Contender, as a boxer. Uh, Sugar Shane Mosley Jr. is fighting for his title shot at the forum so friday nights out there uh should be i should be on tv as well so i mean hopefully you guys can catch it all live and then uh doing some business as well while i'm out there in los angeles too so it, it should be a fun week that's for sure get a little sun it's a little cold up here so i need a little heat myself right now <laughs> all right well good luck and we'll be thinking of you and we will talk to you soon and I'm going to try to make my way out there to Philly sometime, too, as well, and get in studio with all you guys so we'll have a good time. Oh, that'd be fun, Shane. We really enjoy that. Yeah, and just make sure Jay's not smashing pumpkins in there, too, <laughs> yeah. so it'll be great. <laughs> all right, Shane. Take care, Shane. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. You, too. All right, and if we forgot to mention, mentaledgeperformance.ca. Yeah. That is Shane McGowan's website. He's a host and um and Martial arts instructor, writer, and athlete. Mm -hmm. that some what doesn't stuff? he do? I, yeah. I know, right? Oh, I don't know. He's probably on the place. line. I'm afraid to talk about him. Is he on the line again, Adrian? <laughs> no, he's, <laughs> he's, he's still on the line. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're going to get into our picks, I think, Ooh, right now. Yeah, so okay. Our, yes. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, gotta, is, yeah. this is Mike's favorite part of the show <laughs> here because right, he can dive listen. into some of these matchups here. You so can we'll, come in, too. No, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. Hey, Jewel, is it? Uh, we no. got first we'll game. Adrian can fill in for me. <laughs> no, I'll do that. I'll do okay, that. we got the uh, Steelers and the Ravens. Um, I think I'm going with the Steelers on this one because uh, the Ravens' past two games showed me absolutely nothing. We gave them a good whooping last week, uh, put up 36 points against that so-called defense that they preach about up there. And But I think the Steelers are finally like coming together as a team. And plus, my father and my brother are both Steelers fans, so of course I'm going to go with them. Pick, I got the Steelers in this one. Got to keep it on bias here uh, on Sports <laughs> Skillet. <laughs> I know. I try, but yeah, I, I I've got the Steelers as well. The, the Ravens started off hot. Joe Flacco looked oh. like a good quarterback, and now he's back to being the good old Joe Flacco. Mm -hmm. So I, I I like the Steelers in this game. This is, of course, uh, Big Ben and Antonio Brown versus the NFL's number one total defense. Yeah. And, uh, How I'm, crazy is that, that yeah. they're the, the number one total yeah. defense? defense. The Ravens, imagine that. Uh, but still, I, I like, I'm going with Big Ben and Antonio Brown in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going with the group, so I'll take the Steelers in this one. Uh, we'll go to Orchard Park in New York for our next game. That would be the Bears and the Bills. Chicago is in first place through Week Eight for the first time since 2012. Just an interesting yeah. statistic there. This this is a, so. a, a, interesting to me because when the Bears went to Arizona, whenever mm -hmm. they're on the road, they yeah. struggle a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do for this one. Okay. I'm going to take the Bears, but that nine and a half. Put your money on the Bills. Okay. Uh, I'm going. I'm going with the Bears on this one. Bills, just they don't have anybody you know, they, yeah they're Derek bad. Anderson yeah. is hurt he's not he's always been a backup he's never been like mm -hmm. that starting quarterback yeah that one great year in 08 and they're starting the and they're starting Starting. pyramid today yeah yeah I'm so going enough so you're going with the uh, Bears yes absolutely downright and I'm going with the Bears as well I, I see the Bears going to five and three yep. uh, I'm just not into the uh, Bills at this point mm -mm. Uh, next game we have on the slate is, of course, well, we're going to go to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, New McCafferty versus the Bucks' last-ranked scoring defense. This should be fun. Uh, Buccaneers and the Panthers. Um, well, you know who I'm going with right. on this one. We're playing at home. We've been strong the past couple weeks. We've shown, we've shown what we can do. Um, and the Bucks. You know, they're flip-flopping on quarterback. Uh, Fitzpatrick's going to be starting today. Fitz it magic. Could, yeah, right. Fitz magic. It could be a shootout because, I will be honest, we do have a questionable secondary. Our secondary is still kind of young. So it might be a shootout, but I still think, like, in the second half, I think we'll pull mm -hmm. away and we'll get the— I do the like way. James Bradbury a little bit. I thought he did a yeah. good job on Alshon Jeffrey. I like him, too. Yeah. I think Physical he's corner. coming in on his own. Yeah, tall and lean, like 6'3". Yeah. Really we got good. Eric Reed and Mike Adams as our safeties. Yeah, yeah. And they're 
they're doing okay. I like the Panthers in this game mm-hmm. too. I, I expected to be playing in the 30s. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think this will be a high-scoring game. I'm with both of you on this. I think it's going to be one of one of those games, and I just, you know, Fitz Magic, not really anymore. No. I'm, I'm not on that bandwagon anymore. Buccaneers three and four going into this game. I think Panthers uh, get to get to six and two on the season and beat the Bucks. Yep. Let's go to uh, First Energy Stadium, Cleveland, Ohio. Here's a team that's really in a mess right now. <laughs> when uh, haven't they? With their Head coach, offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. uh, moving, moving let's forward. Let's just here. take the Chiefs and go to yeah, the next. Let's yeah, let's just go to the Chiefs. Let's, let's yeah. just uh, forget about that and this take. Uh, we're all taking. Game. We're all taking the yep. Chiefs, right? Yep. Yes. So, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, Hard Rock Stadium, Miami Gardens. That would be the New York Football Jets at three and five going to Miami four and four. Now this is one. This is another tricky one Boy. because you have the Dolphins who are five hundred playing up and down the jets are i don't know just there i guess <laughs> but i think i'm gonna take the dolphins at home yeah just give me the home team yeah this this is that's like all i can say about this this matchup. is the snoozer of the week this yeah. is this is one you don't want to watch because no. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking the dolphins in this just because you know they're home yeah but it's 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 not a, it's not a fun game like i said you have the inconsistent sam darnold against a struggling bear it's gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be like defense. dolphins 13 10 10 <laughs> mm. Uh, now we've got the Lions and the Vikings. I think this is a this is a good divisional matchup. I think it's going to be. Um, I think it's going to be close, but I am taking the Vikings at home by a field goal. This this is another game where where the spread is is five. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking the Lions and the spread, but I'm taking the Vikings straight mm-hmm. up. Yeah, straight up, I'm taking the Vikings. Uh, I just feel, I just think at Stephon home. Stephon Diggs isn't playing this week, though. Stephon Diggs is not playing. I understand that. But Adam Thielen is. Adam, Adam Thielen <laughs> is. So that's that's a weapon right there. And um, I'm just right now not necessarily buying the Lions. They get rid yeah. of their wide receiver. They get rid of Golden Tate. I think that uh, has an impact in this game. Vikings are home. I'm taking the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um Let's go to FedEx Field here yeah. in a very curious game today. Mm-hmm. Uh, the three and four Falcons really need a win to get to five hundred. They're at the Redskins at five and two, trying to get to six and two. This is my upset pick of the week. Now I'm picking the Falcons because this they score a lot. I know their defense is very terrible. The Redskins don't score that much, but also the Redskins have not allowed a one hundred yard rusher. This year, this is going to be a tough matchup, but I am picking the Falcons in this because I think they can outlast Washington. And I don't think Washington, if Falcons put up a lot of points, Washington does not have the strength to come back. Atlanta, so Atlanta began, began the season one and four, well, looked yeah. putrid, dealt mm-hmm. with the injuries. It seems like they've kind of figured things they've out sort of a righted little the ship. bit. Yeah. yeah, they righted the ship. Mm-hmm. You go into to land over Maryland, uh, Washington. I, I'm like still like on the fence with them. Like, eh, are they really this good? Are they? I'm not buying them as much as maybe other people are. I'm, yeah. I'm going to take the Falcons here too. I'm going to go against both. I'm, I'm going to take the Redskins. There it is. In this one, I I, I just happen to feel that I'm gonna text uh, the Redskins. You when I'm right. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Redskins are just uh, to me. I think last week I said the Redskins need to prove something to me. They proved it to me last week. They got to five and two. Yep. Uh, hopefully, at this point, we can move forward. The Redskins continue to move on. I think the Redskins win. Uh, Texans and the Broncos. Houston. Yeah, Texans. Texans. I think we're all in agreement there that Texans get a win over the yep. Broncos. Chargers and the Seahawks. I'm going Ooh. with Seattle. Seattle's at home. They play strong at home. And the crowd will get into it. And this will be the Chargers' first test against a, a real team. And I, But I think the Seahawks get this one. I like the Chargers here. Uh, Seattle does look better in recent weeks. They look mm. good. I, 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 the Chargers have been just like sleeping under the they're radar. Like sneaky. Yeah, yeah sneaky uh-huh. good. I like this team. The, the offensive line still stinks in Seattle. I know they don't have Joey mm-hmm. Bosa back, but it's a good it's a good front seven. You got good cornerbacks. Yep. I, I like the Chargers in this game. Yeah, I like the, I, I like the Chargers as well. I like Phillip Rivers. I think this is a good game to get them to five to six and two. Mm-hmm. Uh, big game of the week: Rams mm. and the Saints. All right, uh, going a little quickly here. I'm taking the the Rams. It's gonna be a this is gonna be a shootout, but I think the Rams. 
I, I like the Rams because of Alvin Kamara. The linebackers have the been the Saints. A, yeah. So I'm taking. Did I say the Rams by yeah. accident? Yeah. I'm taking the Saints. <laughs> I'm taking the Saints. I, I I like Alvin Kamara going against those linebackers. They've been yep. struggling with their linebackers in coverage mm-hmm. and covering running backs, especially the stretch plays. Yeah. So I, I, I like the Saints at home. That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. I like the Saints at home here. If this game was in L.A., I would take L.A. Yes. I think right. the Saints win. Packers and Patriots really quickly. I'm taking Patriots. the bad man himself. No, I am taking the Packers. Oh, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, if this game comes down to who gets the ball last, I pick Aaron Rodgers. You're going to take him over Brady with yes. the ball last. Okay. Because I take... don't like the Patriots. Uh, so. See, you see like the it's you're New letting Bucks get away. Boston, I'm not a Boston <laughs> fan. So no. I'm going with, uh, obviously, I'm going with Tom Brady and the Patriots. Uh, Monday night, we have the Cowboys and the Titans. Uh, this is a game I did not want to pick, but. Really quickly here. Sadly, I have to pick Dallas. Dallas at home. I go with Dallas as well. Yeah, I got Dallas. I was shocked to see that they're six and a half point favorites. Yeah, I was shocked as well. So, Kelly, you want to wrap up with a commercial? I'm going to. All right, guys. We know that good food goes well with good friends, kind of like LeVar Ball and coaching the Lakers with his eyes closed. <laughs> Simone Biles and meddling in every single event at Worlds. Donald Trump and saving us from foes that don't really exist. But what goes best with family and friends on game day any day? That's easy. Wildflowers Restaurant on the Pennington Circle. 23 beers on tap. Flat screen TVs in every room. And I can guarantee it. Check out wildflowersandrestaurant.com for more specials. Nothing goes better with friends and family than Wildflowers on the Pennington Circle. Except maybe Jeff, Kevin Durant, and the New York Knicks. Knicks. And who are we taking? You're taking, obviously, Carolina against Pittsburgh. Who do you yep. got, Carolina-Pittsburgh, this Thursday? I'm taking I'm taking Pittsburgh. I'm taking Steelers. You're taking yeah. the Steelers? Yeah, we're, I'm taking the Steelers I'm taking well. against you. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Going with Big Ben this year. Going to be a fun game. Finally, is. finally right, a well. Thursday game that might actually live yes. up to something. Mm. Thanks for so. listening, everyone. We will be back here next Sunday at 11 o'clock. Don't forget to change your clocks. Have a great day and go to Wildflowers.